Stein. It exists. That's where we're coming in. Lichtenstein. It exists. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's that's the line I'm coming in on. That's just... a strange word to come in on, but sure, I mean, why look, not? That look, works. Uh, it, it, was, it was a side tangent. It was a side tangent we had right before the show. We are talking about uh, German language, Lichtenstein. Because um, apparently they speak it. Anyway. Yeah. That reminds me of Lepidstag from, you know. Lepidstag. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to put that in. There you go. Mm-hmm. You're going you're gonna to Velociraptor us? I'm going to pog champ. It's a, <laughs> every time I see it, it's a, it's a Velociraptor, and I'm like, what? No, it's pog. Everything's pog. I don't know why it's pog champ for Velociraptor. <laughs> I, I don't know either. I don't question it. I, I just think it's silly, and I like it. Yeah, it's like every time I see that, I'm like, why is there a Velociraptor in someone in the like, like, emote going on? And I, I have to like hover over it and be like, oh, that's, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, it's cause, I think it's because it's an excited face or something. Oh, no, I'm being ambushed. Mm -hmm. Oh no, you're being ambushed by a Velociraptor. No, no, it's a goblin. Oh, okay. Anyway, greetings everyone, welcome to Discussing Tabletop. Uh, it is of course uh, Saturday, April 24th, 2021. It's whatever the next episode is, like 181 or something like that, I think. I could probably <laughs> reference You think I notes. know? <laughs> I mean, we kind of changed the format. I should probably reset the numbers or something, but then I'd have to change the name and to make it like you know make sense in my brain. But God, that's effort, though. I have I have no idea how to make it discussing tabletop yet not discussing tabletop because it should be the same name yet slightly different. Uh, podcasting top. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> that, that's Just discussing that. podcast table. There you go. Sure. Anyway, uh, well, welcome to discussing podcast table. <laughs> 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 we have some You're topics welcome. to talk about today. <laughs> We're going to talk about some Legend of the Five Rings products. Um, I haven't talked a lot about Legend of the Five Rings, the RPG, so it'd be nice to uh, talk a little bit uh, there. <laughs> yeah, Look, uh, you know, if I knew anybody of any other ethnicity I would uh, that I could remember to invite... <laughs> I feel, I, well, really, I should do is I should make like a new discussing tabletop section in Discord and be like, hey, I'll just put some people in here, and then if I can find some other people, I can put them in there and be like, who wants to join this week? Yeah, yeah, that'd be pretty good. Yeah, yeah, have it a round table cast. Yeah, that way maybe I can get like you know, not that I don't mind you you two and possibly I'm the one I'm not wanted. <laughs> You're very entertaining, Oof. but sometimes you know, like if I want to talk about magic, maybe grabbing Blaze or someone like you know. Yeah, because I don't. Magic. I don't know much about yeah. magic, other than it's a card game, mm -hmm. and uh, that they are greedy about money. Oh my god, and yes. They, and they are much... terrible about reprinting things. Yes. Either they do it too much, or they don't do it at all. Yeah, these are all <laughs> factual issues. Magic yeah, but, is... but I don't know anything about playing the game, no, That's other, other the... than the basic stuff. Magic is the card game equivalent of Warhammer, as in it will bankrupt you. Oh, yeah, that's that's... What they will try to. Uh, so yeah, Legend of the Five Rings RPG. Uh, then we're gonna talk about uh, Hellboy the, the Dice Game. Uh, I, the docket actually should work. Uh, well, let's find out. Oh, I'll let you do have it. An I'll official let you do doc. It. Oh, you're gonna let me do it? Oh, All right, you actually docket. Uh huh. Exploit point uh, docket. I, I don't know if I can spell docket. <laughs> is that right? Oh, it thank is. God. <laughs> <laughs> there, it worked. Hey, all right. I mean, I technically have a Kickstarter in the topics rather than, like, you know, the actual Kickstarter section, but, like, there weren't great topics this week, so Monster Hunter World, the the board game on Kickstarter, so, That's I mean... That's a weird thing, but all right. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I didn't know if anybody had played it, so maybe I was going to hope to lure people out. I have played it. the video game. Yeah, I played the video game. That's what I mean. Oh, see, then I I've like, got two people that I played like the video Hunter. game. <laughs> Great. Yeah. You know, then I can have some good opinions on it. And our uh, deeper discussion topic today will be secrets in D&D. And I mean, there's a bunch of different types of secrets to talk about. Uh, and the good and bad portions of all of them. Um, let's start Legend of the Five Rings. The thing is, Legend of the Five Rings, um, I gotta be honest, my knowledge of it is probably not great. It's uh, probably like... I think it's supposed to be like Warring China era, kind of, except it's its own mythology, yes. but it's got that like feel of the that time no. period. Judging by the name of 
the country I'm gonna guess is supposed to be feudal Japan, but not. Okay, yeah, so they're going more for feudal much. Japan. Okay. I, I think the map, because uh, there's like an official it's, map, it's really is... more than just Japan. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I don't, it's not even that. I think it's more of like the, the culture and ideals. Yeah, it's just like... But it's it, its own like world and everything. Which is neat. Because, I mean, I like Japanese culture, and I like mm -hmm. Asian culture, so... So it's, yeah. very, it's very Asian culture -y. All very, right. Very, very, very. Um, most of what I remember from it is from the card game. I have never played the card game. See, like, I never owned any of the cards. No, no, I, that's a lie. I did own a couple of the cards because, uh, was it like Inquest Magazine occasionally came with promos? And so I got a couple Legend of the Five Rings promos. Uh, was it Inquest? It might have been. Anyway. One of those, like, nerd game, uh, magazines. And I got them for Magic Gathering prices. Cough, cough. Uh, back in the day. Uh, when that was the only way you could find them out. Uh, old man, grumble, grumble. Uh, anyway. What the heck are they releasing here? Because I'm not... Is it... Is Emerald it's Empire? It's Fields of Victory, Blood of the Lioness. And I think Legacies of the War supplemental content oh they're like adventure pass is what they're releasing yeah, yeah i think that's what they are like um, okay um that's what blood of the lioness is it's an adventure yeah. the fields of victory is uh it's a game master of supplemental it's a game master's book i think fields yeah. of victory is yeah 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 so it's supplemental rules tools guidance for staging grand battles in your campaign i okay i'm gonna put this out here from the card game and the setting. I feel like Grand Battles are something that you really should have had a lot more of stuff already. If you're adding it now, I don't know. I mean, it, I guess... I don't it know. It might be expanded rules on it. Okay. Now, when I played, we never had any big Grand Battles, but mm -hmm. I, I don't feel like digging up the book and trying to find it. Yeah, yeah. But that that's happened before where it's like we have like ship combat like here's i guess some rules for ship combat and then later they go ooh those rules are actually kind of bad and so here's more rules and then like you, after that you kind of pick which one you want to use or you combine them into something yeah um, so it could be that i don't know Maybe. if it had mass combat rules originally i don't know anything about this one so uh, about the game I've, itself? Yeah, the game itself. I've only heard of it and seen people mention it fairly okay. recently. So, in the game, you have, like, different clans you're a part of. And then there's, like, different classes that you are. I've been, I believe, depending on which clan you are, you might have certain restrictions on your, like, class you can take. Um, but, effectively, it is D&D, &D, but different. Um okay. There's not, like, races. It's basically, like, your clan, where you'll have different, like, excuse this beep, that's turn my heater back on. Um, but you have, like, the Scorpion Clan, or, uh, I can't remember any of the clan names <laughs> off my head. Um, I don't but you're all human, basically. And, and you, um, like, your, your clans have specialties, right? A Scorpion Clan, I believe, is more like Assassin Tilt. So you have, like, uh, I'm gonna start quoting Naruto here because it's probably gonna be the easiest thing. You you have like certain things that your clan is known for doing. Mm -hmm. um, so like either they're really good at protecting things, or they're assassins, or they're diplomats, or something. And then you have like a class that you are, and there is technically magic classes in the game, but they are very like fantasy classes. Um, so you're not gonna get like. The be like, I'm a wizard! It's more like I'm a spiritualist. Yeah, hmm. you're, you're probably more like priests, uh, spiritualists. Yeah, you're like a shrine, shrine person. There's, uh, there's definitely, there is one that's like a sorcerer kind of thing, but you're like an elementalist. Yeah. Um, so you have different elemental controls, like fire, wind, and there's also buffing stuff, like the shrine classes will have, like, prayers and things. Um, it, it's kind of an interesting system. Uh, when I played... It was really weird, um, and and honestly, I I kind of liked it and I kind of didn't like it because I'm very D and D focused, mm -hmm. and it is not D and D. Like it it plays very differently to D and D. Okay. Um, but I think the setting and what it's doing is is cool and interesting, but it's very like grounded in reality. Like yes, there's magic and stuff, but compared to like D and D doesn't really have a lot of that fantasy aspects like 
you're probably not going to fight any dragons. Okay. You might fight, like, demons and stuff, but in that world, demons are kind of, like, normal. And then I think there's kind of ghosts. I think we ended up fighting, like, a possessed person or something at one point. Um, but it's an interesting system. I didn't hate it. Uh, so it's just it's just really different. Sounds very Asian mythology. Yeah, it is. Now, the question I have here, this is an important question. What kind of system is this? Because... Does Fantasy Flight pull a Modiphius and make all their same systems the same? Because these are the people that do the Star Wars system that's the current one. I don't remember. I want to say that it was um, multiple dice. It might have been like a D10 system. Okay. Um, I would have to try and find On the, the Wikipedia book. page, it does say... Um, to distinguish this game system from the D20 system mechanics, it is often referred to as, as the D10 classic or roll to keep system yeah so it is not, so it is not d20 okay i think you roll multiple d10s based off of like how well trained you are in certain things okay and then depending on like what you roll dictates how well or if you hit it, okay it, it's a very weird system we would definitely have to like go through the book i um, clicked on their like thing for the basic one and i don't know if these are supposed to be how many sizes does it have? One, two, three. No, these might be D tens, but they're very yeah. weird D tens because D they're tens are dice exclusively. Usually, when a die is rolled and the result is ten, normally marked with zero on the die, the die is said to explode. In this situation, yes, the player rolls exploding. again, and then the new result is added to the original result. With the second result in the ten, the player rolls a third time, totaling totaling all three results. I... Yeah, it's got exploding dice. I forgot about that. Oh, okay. Uh, well, they're so showing they're showing off on the website D sixes and D twelves, but they don't seem to be number based dice. These some seem Those to be could specialty be damage? dice. Damage? Yeah. Because yeah. I think as far as like attacks and doing things, it's all D ten. Oh. But then like like if you do a fireball this, spell or whatever. That might be the original edition of Legend of the Five Rings RPG 2 because I think one came out because they're saying oh, this features yeah, a fusion yeah. of the roll and keep system from previous editions uh, and the narrative dice yeah. used in the, in the Genesis role playing system which I think hmm. the narrative dice system is the one that's used in Star Wars. So they fused the two of them together and came up with something on their own which is weird. That is, that does sound weird. I can't find my book otherwise I would open it. Uh. Uh, huh. uh, but yeah, it's it's very uh, Asian culture. Um, I, I think the biggest problem I had with my game is um, we... Because the game is... Okay, so you have... It's kind of like Vampire. I think this is maybe an easier way to explain it. Because you have political fights and actual fights. Mm. And so you can have someone who is actually just a diplomat. And all of their abilities are like gaining an advantage and talking and stuff and so you actually have like social roles you can do against other people usually npcs um so you can have like this big diplomatic like argument thing where it's like this back and forth discussion um and uh, then you have like the combat side and i originally made like a super mega combat character and then when i started playing the game I'm like oh it's not only that so then i made a different character who was like a, a shrine maiden archer and mm -hmm. so i had it was a little bit less combat and more support because we had like a big beefy tank person right. but the beefy tank person still had a little bit of social skills and i had like no social skills in either character mm -hmm. <laughs> just because of the nature of what i played so it's kind of weird that way um but you can have a game that's purely all combat or purely all diplomat or a little mix between the two hmm. but Honestly, if you were mixing between the two, you probably want to have more than three players, which is what we had. We kind of had three or four, but uh, I don't talk about the fourth character. Mm, okay. I, I understand that kind of thing. So we don't talk about that character. <laughs> yeah, 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 I mean, I'll, I'll talk about it off stream, but it's not really important for the sake of it. Like, I feel like because it's supposed to be like that, I guess, in quotations, like the Warring States era or, you know, the, the yeah. Ages of Turmoil in Asia and stuff like that, I felt like mass combat is something that would have been focused on a lot more or the, or the possibilities of it, you know, that maybe even if you don't have it, that's something that, you know, like conflict between the clans and, the, and the, you know, is something that might be like a theory, that theoretical thing that could be going on very quickly or 
you know, just that there should have been more of it earlier on. Because Legend of the Five Rings, the, the original book, has been out for some time now. I thought the uh, core book came out... I uh, found my PDF. The, the new edition of it, if I could find when they said it came out. Uh, let's see. Easier yeah, said eight. than done. Uh, 1995. <laughs> that, I think that was the, um... Uh, I found probably the original. Page. Uh, 2018 looks like the printing of this book. It, okay, 2018, uh, that sounds about right. Yeah, Maybe. October 11th, 2018. So, there you go. Yeah, that's the printing of this book. So, like, so I am looking in the book now. Okay, so there is, uh, chapter one's playing the game. It talks about how the different dice and... Oh, that's right, strife is a thing. You, you take, like, stress damage. Um, mm. I forgot, that's a thing. The, creating the character, it's talking about the different clans, um, honor and glory, um, strengths and weaknesses. This is something that's really bad for me as a player. In this game, you actively pick weaknesses. And some of them are really, really, really awful. They are like actual, like, if the DM pulls this out, it could just shut your entire character down. And I personally don't like things like that. So that's kind mm. of a me thing. Um, yeah. Other people like that stuff. See, like... Um, I, I prefer, like, some just as a side note here, something like what World of Darkness does or Shadowrun does. It has a merit or a flaw system. Yeah, that'd be a lot better, I think. Because then you get bonuses for the flaws, and you can take you can either purchase merits anyway, or you could use the flaws to get more merits. And it's sort of like you're choosing these weaknesses so you get a bonus kind of thing. I feel like the, the balancing of those works pretty well to build in some weaknesses to your character and can create some interesting things that way. Yeah. Uh, this one, it, it's it's a lot more like real worldy besides the fact that magic still exists. But like, because the thing is with D and D, you know, you have basically demons and angels as playable races and stuff, you know, and then you have mystical elves or living constructs. D and D is very high fantasy. This, you're all humans dealing with either human problems or um, supernatural problems. And the supernatural problems can be very, very strong and dangerous. Um, and also, in Chapter 6, Mass Battles is in here. Okay. So, good. it's probably a supplemental uh, to make it... Rules and such. Yeah, expanded That's good. Rules. That's good, then. Like, I, I think the difference between D&D &D and this one is... D&D &D is like a lot of fantasy stories and stuff like that. While, when you think about the Asian cultures... There were shrine maidens. There were sorcerers. They might not have had the same powers that they do in the game. Yeah, where in this one you legit actually yeah. can be like, oh, I they cast were fireball. people. Like a sorcerer might be someone that works in like you know, the basics of like you know, I would call it alchemy, but you know like potions and herbalism and stuff yeah. like that. While a shrine maiden, you know, gives prayers and stuff. Do they actually do anything in real life? There really isn't like demons and spirits. Probably you know things kind of like that. You know. Here, I, I will read you one of the random things. This is Breath of the Fire Dragon. It's a rank 3 ability, so that means it's fairly high level, because I believe it caps out at rank 5. So this is like maybe a 8th or 12th level character in D&D terminology. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to read the flavor text, though the flavor text that they add in this game is very cool. Um, so as an action, you can make a uh, target number. It's a TN, uh, so target number four, Theology, which is a skill, Fire, targeting one creature out of range of zero to three, because it uses range increments. Uh, zero, I believe, is like right in front of you. And, and three is probably a, like a short bow to long bow range. Okay. Um, if you succeed, you exhale Searing Flame that smites the target and those around them. The target suffers supernatural damage, which is a thing, because supernatural damage is like... I guess uh, aggravated in vampire, where you don't resist it ever. I think. Okay. Yeah. Or only certain, or if it's a supernatural creature, it might have supernatural resistance. So they have different like tiers. It's a very vampire, I guess. Maybe is a better example. Um, equal to your fire ring, which is um, instead of like having strength, dex, con, you have like you know fire, earth, water. And those represent different aspects. I believe, like, Earth is more of, like, your, like, constitution or whatever. Um, I, I don't remember. It's been a long time since I played, like, actually years since I played this system. Um, anyway, so it, it does damage equal to your fire ring plus two times the bonus successes. Because you have, like, a success and then a bonus success. So, like, you have a target number of four. You need four successes to do this. If you have extra successes, it does extra damage. 
And then uh, people that are um, one to four ranges of the target must make a, a target number of three fitness check, which is a skill. It's you know, fitness is like being I guess it'd be like uh, athletics maybe. Yeah. D and D. Um, uh, air check is a four. So here's another thing: you have stances in this. Um, if you like our fire stance, it does certain things. If your air stance, it does other things. So for example, if you were in air stance, like I'm an archer, I'm an air stance or something. Mm -hmm. um, the the check for you would actually be a difficulty four, um, as opposed to if you were like in a water stance, which is probably more of like a healer stance, which would only be a difficulty one check. So it'd be really easy for someone who's like in a water stance, which is like I think more of a defensive one, um, to make this check. Otherwise, they suffer a supernatural damage equal to your fire ring. So it's not a lot of damage to them. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's super, super different than like a lot of other systems I've played. Probably mm -hmm. closer to Vampire than any other system. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Well, it's not bad, but it's it's just different. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's hard to get into something that is just so different than what you're used to. Yeah. Doing. I'm glad they're expanding on some of those things. Because again, like the, the mass combat, I feel like from the origins of the game, because I think it was the card game first, then that first RPG, and now this RPG now, and we're so far from the goddamn collectible card game, came out in those early days along with Magic, man, you know? We're so far from that now. I feel like recapturing some of that's good. And, you know, adventures are good too. It's just, I don't see a lot of stuff on their product line. Like, it, it, I guess it's the same with Fantasy Flight. I'm just thinking about it, and I don't see a lot on Star Wars. They come out with stuff, but it's very far and few between. Like, even less than D and D. D and D will at least come out with something like once every couple of months or something. You know? Yeah, there's not that many Star Wars books. There's three. Yeah, and the only one I've done is uh, Edge of the Empire. I think yeah. they threw a few. I know there's. Force and Destiny, I don't know what the other one is. I was just looking in the folder that would tell you. Um, Edge of the Empire, Force, Force and Destiny, and, Destiny, and, Age, of and then, Age of Rebellion. Yeah, Age of Rebellion. Um, and they're all different because of time settings. Though, yeah. technically, you can use all the books in all the time settings. It's just, um, I believe it tells you, like, you probably wouldn't have this if you're playing in, you know, this era of gameplay. You know, and then like you know, use your own judgment as a, yeah. as a game master. Now, it's not like they haven't come out like like I can check Edge of the like Edge of the Empire. They've got a couple adventures. They've got a couple of supplements. It's just like I haven't heard anything about it in like a while now. You know, that's the thing is like they kind of went silent, and I feel like it's not a bad time to continue with Star Wars. Like. The Disney Plus series that are, you know, that come out and are coming out are probably make it pretty good for them to continue making stuff, but I don't know. I think they might, like, I don't know when the last, like, I guess, rule book for Edge of the Empire came out. But a couple of years now, I think. I think it, yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, like, when I looked I think, at the... I think Force and Destiny is more recent... They had allies and adversaries rise of the allies and adversaries rise of the separatists collapse the republic and dawn of the rebellion in edge of the empire. Those might be the same ones. Uh, oh, okay. Force and destiny had keeping the peace, nexus of power, endless vigil, disciplines of harmony, knights of faith, savage spirits, unlimited power. They had more for being a Jedi, which actually makes a lot of sense for. Yeah, them. they didn't have anything original. The, the rules, the guy I've looked at the yeah. first and destiny. And they do have seven, it looks like they do have seven books that they call rule supplements for Age of Rebellion. They don't have a lot for Edge of the Empire. Hmm. Hmm. Edge of the Empire is the only one I've played. I liked it. I feel like part. when people talk weird. about that, I feel like I like that one the best. Like, you know, because that's like. Like, if you're a Jedi, you're a Jedi. If you're in the Rebellion, you're in the Rebellion. You're kind of, like, shoehorned into, like, various, yeah. various types of stories. Yeah, two-shoes nerd. Yeah. You're, you're in those stories. Then, wow. there's, then there was my character in Edge of the Empire, who was just a bounty hunter who had some paddle droids with her. Mm -hmm. I would just like to point out, we are very off-topic. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, yeah, I mean... 
it looks interesting. I don't know if I'd, I'd play it. But if someone offered me, I'd probably I try. I could be convinced. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have the core book, but I don't know if I could run it. <laughs> yeah, it, that's it's... the thing. Finding someone to run this as well. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I could, I could go through it later if you wanted to hear more about it but it's it's not a bad system um i probably wouldn't run a super political game because i'm probably not very good at that just just straight up politics is hard to do mm -hmm. yeah i mean those situations could come up like you're gonna talk to this npc and maybe they're hostile and it's like oh you have this political talking ability to help you deal with hostile npcs great you know and then you could use that i think that for me would be uh, if I was running this as a game master, I think that'd be the best way of doing the social stuff. Mm. Is more of you guys have like a quest, or because I believe there's actually personal quests that you choose, um, and then you can like make your own. I think the system is is interesting, but it's just like I mean I'm just being a broken record here. Like, it's so different than just regular like D and D and stuff mm. that it's kind of hard to get into. I think. Yeah, like reading reading through it, it seems like really cool and interesting but I, I yeah i would need like convincing it would be like in a long explanation of the mechanics i think the good oh, yeah. i think the good example not only mechanics because mechanics are a huge thing but i think it's the thing like something like the oriental adventures book that came out in third edition i never ran it really because for one thing it was very different like setting wise and very unique it's D D made it easy to run but like your settings in that were very vastly different and i think that can be the issue sometimes is that like we probably like especially me i have a more much more european centric idea of a lot of things it means that like there is it's harder but not impossible for me to roll some of these other cultures i can bring them in in little bits here and there in my games and i don't mind that but focusing a game straight on that unless i have something in front of me to help me that makes it more difficult like i don't know i could create my own like asian style culture that doesn't that's as fully respectful like as something that legend of the five rings might be to like the histories and stuff they might go into like this like rather than like real life history but like the ideas of some of these things and cultures yeah. you know it's yeah like, y you want to respect it because you're imitating it and yeah that can be difficult. It's, it's definitely like well, when I look at, at stuff like this. Um, as like sure an outside observer, I have interest in those cultures. Like, do I know that much about them? No, not really. So I, I know I wouldn't be able to do something respectful. Yeah. So. So. But why I stick to like England and France <laughs> in my games? My Germany. I stick to a lot of pre-made worlds because they're a lot easier. Like if, like if I want to pick, like in Vampire, I want to spend someone, send someone somewhere in the world. I can Google it. In in Faerun, it's the same way. If it's Toril, yeah. most of those places in the world, I can Google it. Like, oh yeah, here's how Kozakora worked in, uh, you know, Faerun, and we're in Toril, the planet. Great, I can use that. They can go to visit an Asian place, you know, <laughs> effectively. Yeah. But all right, we should yeah. move on. Yeah, I'll happily talk more about this after the stream because, yeah. you know, I, I have the book open now and I can go through some of the things. Hellboy the Dice Game. I mean... I... <laughs> I don't know what to say about this one, really. Like, it's... I just, like, look at the, the components. It's a very simple thing. Um, you beat room cards with dice, uh, which feels a little um, Elder Sign. Um, except it feels less... It feels simpler than something, let's say, like, than Arkham Horror, you know, or, or, or like, the Arkham Horror world. So, like, Arkham Horror, they had their dice game, which was Elder Sign, which, you know, had its complexities and felt very connected with Arkham Horror. I haven't played the Hellboy board game, but they're announcing, it's the same company that did the board game, is going to be doing expansions on Kickstarter, and at the same time, they're putting out this dice game. Which you could get a copy of with the Kickstarter. I guess it's like a... It sounds like from the what I've read, it might be an expansion. You know. Um, it's like an add-on. You know? Yeah. Uh, One thing I would point out um, is they use proprietary dice 
Uh, which, by the way, so does Legend of the Five Rings. And I, I really hate when they do that, just just because that's dumb. Yeah. <sighs> like, yeah. using D6s, or D6s with slightly different symbols. <laughs> you know, like, just make the, 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 the dice a little different, you know, or something like that, you know? There are ways that you can do this to make it better and not proprietary. Like, yeah. If you roll a number of between blank and blank, it means this. If you roll a blank, it means that. You know, I, I, that's something that it's just old man grumble grumble, I guess. I mean, but I, I really dislike that because to me it just feels like they're greed. It just feels like greed to me. Well, I mean, like uh, in a board game. I can understand for priority of dice. It's part of the board game, you know? Um, beyond that, like, when it comes to RPGs, proprietary dice are in this weird segment for me, you know? Like, like if I think about Star Trek, because I've been playing that, they have proprietary dice. Not all of them, but they have some. They've got their effect dice. I think you can use D6s, and they tell you how to use D6s, which is nice. That's why yeah. I don't hate the proprietary dice. You're like, you could use our dice, or here's what you do with D6s if you can't get those. Yeah. You know? That would be totally fine if they did that. Now this, um, As opposed to, you know, just like, use our dice or else you can't figure out how to roll things. I mean, like, in this case, because it is a dice game, I don't yeah. hate it as much. Yeah. But it's still that kind of thing of, like, proprietary dice are still quite annoying. It's also a card game, too, kind of. So in this, yeah. you're, you're getting everything. You're getting all the cards. You're getting the dice. They're colored and styled a little bit. So I think in this case, it's fine. I just noticed that like they have like a blue D6, and it's like it's got effects on it, and it's like oh, yeah. mm, that reminds me of proprietary dice, which I don't like. <laughs> it stands out. You're just like you look at that, and you're yeah. just like hmm. I mean, they I also think... have some black ones, which I'm not sure what they do. I, I think like it, it maybe because I played a lot of games with like effects dice that I'm like that's fine because I play a lot of like shit like Warhammer and stuff or used to um which has you know like I said I also played like X on board game and all those kind of things so I'm not I'm fine with like that kind of dice for the most part however uh like I I, I don't like just pure dice games that much not that much oh. kind of thing. Oh, well, that sucks, because I'm going to make you guys roll, like, 500 d20s. Oh, it's uh, time to fell all my wisdom. You, you, you just couldn't it's play Quarriers, then. Quarriers! Look, uh, the, the Quarriers was, is a hell of a dice game. It is, it is in the heaviest essence, a dice game, uh, as it is a box of dice, if you actually own it. A friend of mine does, and I think we played it on uh, Sunday's Tabletop at one point in time. And the only thing about Quarriers that I can really say is that we made jokes because it's such a weird name that they were, like... Uh, they were like the Saturday morning cartoon version of like accountants. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the clients have to do their taxes now. <laughs> they have to oh, file I the L seven report before the time runs out, or the great demon umpire will destroy them. <laughs> Let me just get some D six uh, ASMR here for you. Mm, yes, that's a four. Mm, yes. Yes. But it was like you know like eighties Saturday morning cartoon, so it was probably so it made to sell toys. You know, that's 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 the way I always like went on about Quarriers because I don't know, it it should be a thing. Um, but okay, so again, it's I'm not exactly sure how everything works on this. You know, because we're just getting the basics. It's that you're supposed to beat these rooms that have a number of enemies to defeat in order to gain these clues, and you could get wounds if you fail. Yeah, and the you... different colored dice represent like the the type of roll it is. Yeah, uh, I've already closed that page, but I remember reading that. Oh, yeah, a yellow yeah, attack, color. orange attack, which is a bit better. Red attack, which is all the better, and a black attack, which is the best attack dice you could get. <laughs> die, is, Rasputin. Blue is like the wound to die. Yeah, yeah. it's like I'm... I guess if you don't clear a room, you roll wounds. Yeah, yeah, which I. I mean, that's a mechanic from, like, a lot of these kind of games. I kind of like wound die in in games, but I can see why people hate it. <laughs> okay. I think it's fine. It fits the mechanic of the game. Yeah. And you got limited dice, uh, so it's like kind of like you got to, like, feel when you're going to use your dice, and you're trying to get to 15 clues. This sounds like a, some stuff that's maybe interesting here, but it also sounds like some stuff that's like, hmm, I really want to check your full rules before yeah. maybe diving yeah. into this one. Yeah. Like, 
<laughs> license thing, like board games that use licenses, I'm always like really iffy on. Mm -hmm. at pretty much all the time and unless I see like your full rules for them and what you're doing with them because uh, a lot of them are bad just put that out there a lot of licensed things are bad oof hot take it's not a bad hot take but <laughs> as I eat a little bit my my opinions on licensed games were ruined long ago by the fact that it was a Christmas my mom in her infinite wisdom, just grabbed a couple of random board games to get me. And one of them was this Hobbit game. Oh no! It oh, looked Lord. it looked terrible. I'm like, this looks very much licensed game, awful. I played it with Joe one time, and it was actually a really fun game. It oh, didn't need oh, the yeah. Hobbit skin. Honestly speaking, it didn't need the Hobbit skin at all. Um, it was just a fun board game with a Hobbit skin on top. Yeah, they, can, of it. they can be fun. Um, I mean, I played the Resident Evil 2 board game, and that was a really fun time. Um, so yeah, licensed games can be fun, just a lot of times I find them not that good or fun. Personally. Oh, I can understand that. It's 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 a crapshoot, technically, at this point yeah. in time in reality. And I, I think I talked about the Hellboy board game when it first came out with Joe, and we were... We were also like, eh, I don't know, it's a licensed board game, <laughs> or something like that. And now they have a licensed dice game, which looks even more, uh... And the thing is, is they're, they're like kind of putting it together with, in, their, in a way, with their Kickstarter, which is for expansions for their board game. Why are they doing a separate game yeah. with that, even That's if this is an add-on, you know? maybe it's separate and they're like we were already working on this and then we decided to make a full board game and since we already had all this work done okay yeah. so imagine if you are creating something mm -hmm. and you're like i want to make a board game yeah. and then you get like ten thousand ideas and you're like all right well we can't have all these ideas so you cut them in half all right we've got five thousand ideas these are these are all pretty good ideas yeah. but still too many ideas you might have had some really good ideas that wouldn't have worked as a board game, but maybe they worked as a dice game, and you made so much, like, stuff and effort, you're like, you know, if we just spend, like, another, like, week or so, we can have this as its own game, and then we'll focus on the board game. I mean, yeah. I, I've had ideas where yeah. it's like, this would be great, but not for the game I'm trying to make. But at this point in time, why not either make it its own Kickstarter... Or just release it and not make it as part of like an addition to the Hellboy the board game expansions Kickstarter. Uh, I don't know because people are weird. <laughs> That's the kind of thing. Is the, they've announced that you know they have a, they had the Hellboy the game, board game. You know they have a, they have a Kickstarter coming out. You know for like expansions to it. You know then they're adding in and this is part of the entire thing. You know it's like it's not an expansion. It's its own thing and. Like you know, why you just it, it, maybe maybe they're treating it more like you also get this, but that again, it's then it's, doing. it's 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 like, still like an extra. Like they maybe they looked at it like maybe this isn't good enough to sell on its own, but it could Ooh. be like an extra to this thing, and they just like latch it onto there. Yeah, maybe, that, that that genuinely happens quite a lot. Maybe to like. uh I, I'm just sorry. Uh, the one I'm, I just got brain farted because the, the 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 one place I was looking that originally like linked me to this, I was like, I just realized that they didn't spell it Hellboy. It was Hello Bye. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know, the, the place where I found the link to this like to the to the, like the article I linked to you guys. You know, like originally when I was like looking through stuff. You know, was, I was checking with them like the news sites uh, for tabletop stuff and. I, it's, I hadn't realized it until now, but it's Hello Bye. Because I went back nice. to check it. <laughs> Hello Bye is my favorite comic book character. <laughs> but no, yeah, I, I can see that maybe, like, they got pretty far with the process for the dice game, and then they're like, oh shit, this sucks. Let's just tack it on to something else. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Uh, or maybe they just, again, it won't sell. I don't know. It, it, I think there, yeah. there probably are reasons, but. Uh, yeah. But uh, let's talk about Monster Hunter World because there's a Kickstarter for it. I probably should. Like... Oh my god! I just looked at how much money it's raised. Jesus. Uh, yeah, people like Monster Hunter. 
How much money has it raised? I, I have to open it. one million. Because I have to open wow. this in Chrome to see that. Remember, I, like, Kickstarter yeah. pages don't work for me. Uh, Fog of War and Kickstarter pages don't work for me in Firefox, and I have no idea how to fix 3. that. 3.1 million. Oh, it's going 13, up. 000, oh, uh, almost 13,000 backers. I'm just going to do some quick math. Yeah, the number is changing while we're doing this, yeah. so... Mm -hmm. Uh, twelve thousand eight hundred and thirty-five. So the average person has given two hundred and forty-four dollars to this. Yep. On average. That's, uh, yeah, the oh. most. Uh, hey, the most. Um, back one is the two hundred and eleven dollar version. Yeah. Oh, imagine that. The there's the <laughs> seventy-one dollars slash fifty-one. Is that that's pounds, right? Or um, is it? Oh, this is in pounds. It's pounds. Yeah. Yeah, pounds. Uh, is it's the Forge games are the British? Yeah. Uh, the board game, the Ancient Forest. You get that, and then I guess the core pledge gets both. Yeah. Thank you, Chrome, for like booping at me every time I open you. I just this want to check to go for Stop like it. five minutes. Stop it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I can do it justice. Uh, yeah, I didn't this. read this ahead of time, but like I love Monster Hunter World, um, and the miniatures look really cool, and I'd be willing to give this a try. However, <sighs> there I personally don't have the money to back it. No, uh, God, that's a lot. <laughs> that's miniature a lot. games are ex. Which which one's the lowest one to get the game? That the lowest 51, one to get the ancient 51. forest is is the seventy one dollars American. Yeah. Uh, oh, for one hundred and forty two, you get the core French, which you get the ancient forest, the wild spire wastes core set, uh, and the Kula Yaku Kickstarter exclusive, and all login bonus daily unlocks. Because apparently you have to log in or something to get daily unlocks. Oh, if it doesn't have like an app attached to it, that's a deal breaker. <laughs> I've played board games that have apps attached to them. That is a topic counts. that I want to hit up at some point in time for our deeper discussions. Apps with oh, your tabletop. Come. Because there's some uh, of them that I think are good and some of them that I think are bad, and there's a mixture of in between, and we much, should talk about that at some point. How much is the pound conversion right now? Is it 1.5 for dollar? Um, it looks approximately 1.5 because 102 so, pounds uh, is about 1.39. Okay, so it's okay, 140. So it's like 140 dollars for the whole game, I think. Um, oh it, wait, no, there's an all-in apparently, yeah, which the is all even in. more. Yeah, that, the all-in, okay. which then also has the Hunter's Arsenal expansion, the Kula uh, Dodor expansion, the Neo Gigante expansion, the Tetsuroso expansion. Uh, that seems to be the big one. Yeah, that... yeah that's like like almost $300 or something. Yeah. I'm ass that. assuming what the basics of this game is, without going too deep into it, is sort of like the main boards are like the big things you can hunt, I assume. You know, like or locations too. Which... It's maybe like a location for Yeah, these are, these are locations. Which gives stuff for it, you know. So it's sort of like... Like different creatures. And yeah. Um, so, like, if you're in ancient forest, it might be harder to hunt. Like, the, it has different things you have to work with because there's teamwork, positioning, stamina, which your characters do. It's supposed to be cooperative arena combat board game for one to four players. I mean, I imagine it's just Monster Hunter, but as a board game. So well, that's kind of what it have... feels okay. like. So I, I, I looked it up because I some of these names sound familiar. In, in the all in version, the the only board looks like the ancient forest in in the wild spire waste yeah the rest are i think monsters yeah i think the rest are monsters because um yeah. kushala Kuyaku is the rock he's... bird yeah, yeah and kushala whatever's a the elder dragon in the world so yeah, nargagante is a elder dragon as well it looks so like two, two it looks like the ancient forest has four xl monsters four hunters 600 cards the double-sided game board a rule book and a quest book that it comes with for just the basic one. That's the Ancient Forest. And the Ancient Forest Hunters are Great Sword, Dual Blades, Bow, Sword, and Shield. And they got great... It does say it's only supposed to be 60 to 90 minutes. I, it must just be one I... of those things that looks complicated, but once you know what you're doing, it plays okay. pretty quick. It might also be one of those, um, you, like, do a bit, stop, and then do a oh. more later. Like, you continue progression kind of board game. Yeah, it could be... Because, I mean, that's what that's it kind of looks yeah. like. And the wild. Because in Monster Hunter, you, you go on your hunt. Yeah. 
Wildspire Waste seems to have three XL monsters, a X XL monster, four another, four more hunters, six hundred more cards, another, and all the rest of the crap that they kind of talk about. So then they have Charge Blade, Switch Act, Insect Glaive, and Heavy Bowman. I'm assuming you could use the hunters between the different ones, and like you know, yeah, I, would I, just, like I assume so. Because that's just a quick. I mean, if I wouldn't be able to use like the Insect Glaive guy on like a different board, I'd be a little. Concerned. But do they have the best gun? I um, mean, gun lance. They do. That's in the Hunter's Arsenal gun? expansion. Oh, oh, hell yeah, gun lance. Yeah, they have light bow gun, uh, long sword, gun lance, hammer, lance, No, who long horn. sword? Boo. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I only use gun lance. Gun lance uh, is awesome. It's just cool. It is. I got really good with it. Cause I, because in the actual game, I am really bad. So I started using a shield weapon so I could block because I'm terrible. And it's a whole lot easier to block yeah. than it is to dodge out of the way. And then I got to a certain difficulty curve where it's like, oh, you haven't fully specced into being a block person? Now you die. And so I had to, to, to do other things. And uh, I, I both love and hate the game. Um, yeah, it's a, I, I, yeah, it's kind of <laughs> where I sit on all Monster Hunters is a love-hate relationship. <laughs> Yeah, it's very grindy. Uh, so a board game version probably is not grindy at all. It's just this is your loadout and this is how you fight things. Yeah. So that's actually probably in its its favor. Uh, for me personally, this is just me. That's not true for everybody. It's very expensive. But as people have pointed out, it's a miniatures game, and miniature games are expensive. It's yeah. just how it is. Yeah. So if you like miniature games and you like Monster Hunter, yeah, and I... you have the money. It's probably going to be good. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like they're... It, like, Monster Hunter feels like something that could translate fairly easy to board games. That's the one of the things about it. Like, there's a lot of... It's mixed bag when I feel like somebody says a property, I'm like, how does that translate to a board game well? This is one of the ones where I'm like, well, you're fighting a monster. Um, they have some, Looks like they have basic rules for, like, targeting on monsters and stuff, too. So, like, hitting certain areas have certain effects and things like that. Yeah, because that's in the regular game. Yeah. Um, and certain weapons will do, like, more damage or more effective in different monster parts. Like, a hammer, I believe, is, like, ex almost exclusively the head. Yeah. And bonking the head is good because it can, like, stun them and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, to add, because there was that, the login bonus thing we saw, that's mm -hmm. just what they're calling the stretch goals, basically. Oh, well, that's Which good is, that it's not actually kind of a browser. Confusing, but because that's what it is in game. <laughs> so I get why they're using that terminology, but that's a little confusing. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how they do it though, because they just call it the login bonus. It's like, won't feature stretch goals that are unlocked once you reach certain funding levels. Said every day will automatically unlock an extra login bonus reward that will be added to every core and pledge for free. Oh, they're it, just adding shit probably... every day. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, it, it's probably just. The, the phrasing with between games uh, it's, and it's weird phrasing yeah because because it, it maybe oh uh, maybe what it really is is that like the earlier the pledge the more stuff you yeah. get to maybe i don't know Possibly? i don't know but all right this campaign won't feature stretch goals that are unlocked once you reach certain levels funny levels instead every day will automatically unlock a extra login bonus reward that'll be added to every core and all in pledge for free can you just get it yeah i don't yeah, know so that, that... if if you've pledged at a certain level and they reach a certain funding thing you are getting extra stuff so any anything that they add or whatever is included as a okay and they're just bonus. being like it's the login bonus yeah, yeah. that's a term I, I, from the game yeah i think it's uh, just poor phrasing oh it's uh, incredibly poor phrasing unless you as i sit here and like the it almost goes up a thousand dollars like you know now that i'm on the chrome you know just <laughs> the number just ch chimes up yeah this, they're giving them in um metric which has no bearing on my brain um, but this Kushla Dora, which is the Wind Elder Dragon, is 255 millimeters That's, tall. Um, 10 inches. Just gonna put that out there. It's 10 okay. inches tall. <laughs> and then uh, 310 millimeters wide. Like, I think 12. So it's a big. It that's, might that's a, look. I'm gonna be say it might be easier to convert it to centimeters because it's like what, um, 2.5 centimeters per inch, and yeah. so just divide those numbers by 10 and you get centimeters. Big mini. 
So yeah, so yeah, that's I mean, why you can be like, it's two twelve twenty five point five centimeters. That's ten yeah, inches. That's that's easy. Also, I, I can do that conversion. Yeah. But, I, but it's it's the going from metric to imperial that my brain just shuts down. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, like that's again, fair. like converting the centimeters is I think pretty easy, and I literally love millimeters. They just love millimeters, and I'm just like, mm. well, yeah. I mean, that's how you measure guns, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is a these are some big minis. Some of these are big. Yeah. So I uh, think that obviously make makes the price more because oh, yeah. more material. Mm -hmm. Oh man, yeah. There, there's a lot of miniatures. So, I mean, just the fact that, I mean, you could just buy this because you want the miniatures, and you don't care, you don't care at all about the actual yeah, like, board game. I'll be honest. This. The, the big dragon. I just put that on my shelf. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's freaking awesome. And you could paint it. And you could freaking technically use it in a D and D game. Yeah, and we could just be like, like, "You're fighting this." this. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, hey, um, yeah, you're fighting, you're this, fighting this. this. <laughs> you must target its head in order to do more damage. Too bad its head yeah. has greater AC than the rest of its body. Fuck you. Yeah, it's, it's that's a called shot. That is a that's a higher DC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean. We are probably not the target audience for this, but um, it. I imagine it's good, uh, especially considering that they've raised, you know, like three million dollars. I mean, I would have definitely been been more interested in this like back when I actually part partook in miniature gaming, but it's just too expensive. Yeah, I bought my miniatures back in the day. I uh, they were. My, I sold all my Warhammer uh, minis and made like a, way too much money than I should have. <laughs> I good. spent way too much money on D and D miniatures, and they were <sighs> collectible miniatures game. Mm. Yeah, I think like I sold my entire like Beastman army for like sixty bucks, mm. which is wild. That someone would actually buy that. I think some of them might have value with those D and D minis. You Probably, see. if they're collectible. Probably. Yeah, because they were like you know you they had sets and you yeah. and you got random groups and they had like you know it's commons, uncommons, and the rare minis in there. It's like it it was freaking uh freaking magic, <laughs> but in miniature form. So it was do wizards. We continue uh, with yeah. the Kickstarter stuff because yeah, there's there was another one here. I yeah, I will I will link it because I have that ability. No, oh. it's. D and D, Grim Hollow. Yeah, my if anyone has spoken to me in the last like three months knows I love this setting. Hell yeah! The dark fantasy is cool, and Five B doesn't have enough official dark fantasy shit in it. When is this being released? Is this um, something that's gonna happen to our Friday game? Because oh god, no! I'm probably be honest. Um, if I do get the money, I'm gonna back it for at least for probably the PDF. Yeah, um, um, because which is there's 25? temptation of. Temptation yeah. of 400 more monsters. May 22nd. Probably. I mean, not 22nd. Sorry, that's the year. <laughs> it's this year, May, the month, uh, mm -hmm. which is next month, I believe. Uh, yeah, so uh, apparently it's coming pretty soon. Uh, it has 27 days left to go, which is probably it's when they'll start shipping things out. Already super funded. <laughs> it's very funded. By a mm -hmm. lot. Um, yep. But, like, Grim, Grim Hollow, for those who don't know, I've talked about it on the show before. It is a, a very good and well done, very grim, dark uh, 5e setting. Um, that, and I, I think things like that are sorely missing in, in 5th edition, because you know, everyone wants their happy go slay dragon, but no one wants their oh god, horrible undead are murdering me. Yeah. But, yeah. Grim Hollow's cool. Um, I am down for more monsters because there are monsters in the the campaign guide I have, and they're really well done. More yeah. monsters, so just more of that. It's something that Tantus always likes to complain about, even though you can just go to Cobalt Press and get one of their things. I yeah. know, but they... I don't. I I I don't want to because it's it's. I feel like it's it's giving in to like, you know, like it's the laziness of wizards. Yeah, they're just like so everybody else do our job yeah, for like, us. I, I, I would know. put it this way. Um, everything Ghostfire Games has put out for Grim Hollow has either satisfied or impressed me, so I will happily give them money for this. Also, my example of fighting that would be Dark Matter and Space Sharks. But... And Ghost Ships. 
you you realize though <laughs> that there was a reason why some of those things weren't great, right? Uh -huh. You do realize that uh -huh. it wasn't like, oh, uh, if this is a CR ten thing, and you're gonna fight it. What okay, okay. Wait, how about this? CR? Memory fish. Okay. Ha! 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 The creature had the ability to attack and auto grapple. I believe it was an auto grapple. Mm -hmm. And then it had the ability to teleport. It could only do that like on its next turn. But then after it teleports, it can go blah, 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 and delete all your memory, including mm. the memory of anybody who knew you. So then it can teleport back and just drop this random person that nobody knows anything about. Mm, They've been deleted from history and all of your brains. That's a thing, sure. It's. <laughs> It's an incredibly, stupidly, brokenly overpowered thing, and mm. any DM who realizes that, oh, hey, this ability is incredibly broken, would basically just not use that. Yeah. So that's more of whoever created that creature just thought, this is a cool thing, and they put it in there without thinking how it could actually completely destroy your entire campaign <laughs> by just teleporting in and out for free and deleting the memories of your and your, your players, and there's nothing they can do about it. I also do want to say, um, on this Kickstarter, they specifically mention the book will contain templates and instructions on how to use them. Oh, oh hell Thank yeah. you, templates. That's... I miss those. You technically kind of have them in the Dungeon Master's Guide as far as regular Wizards of D&D, but it's not much and it's not great. Yeah. So, like... <laughs> Shut up, Tangents. <laughs> things that are... that make it better for me to make monsters. Actually. I've been making a lot of monsters. You guys bought one I made. Already? Um, yeah, it was real gross. It was a weird spider. Oh, the skull spider? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I it thought was, that was, was just... the thing. No, that's not a thing in 5e. <laughs> well, you I had an official picture, so I'm like, oh, God. Yeah, weird spider. Um, but anyways... Yeah, like, I'm all for things that make it easier to make monsters, or just more monsters in general. Yeah. Um, it also is adding some items, um, instead of, it's adding items, uh, monster cards with their ability, with the monster abilities on them, so you, like, stat blocks you can have in front of you, which is nice. Uh, it can come with some miniatures, which is always nice. Yeah, and maps, too. And, and, yeah, and some battle maps. And some trinkets, if you pay, uh, $500 for some reason. That's a lot. Are you getting actual trinkets? Or yeah, they're just, actual uh... physical items. Oh, okay, well, that's that's not bad then. Yeah. I mean, so, if, if um, it was just like a card that says, here's some extra trinkets, we put it like, that's a lot of money. No, it's like actual physical items, but yeah. I'm I'm all for it. I love Grim Hall. I love what Ghostfire Game is doing with it. Um, I, 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 I support this. I think it's great. You all should check it out. Yeah, as a player in a Grim Hollow dark setting, um, well, me personally, if, if Momo, who is our DM, went oh, mega super dark, I probably wouldn't enjoy it because that's just me personally. Yeah, I'm, I'm toning the setting back a little bit. Um, but if you like ultra dark or just slightly dark, then here you go. The, um, the campaign guide also um, gives advice on altering the setting to be less dark as well, which is a very nice thing for them to include. Hey. Like I, I have pulled certain things out of it so that it's not completely hopeless, but it's still pretty bleak. That's fine. I'll just use my... Your totally dark... normal rogue powers. Yeah, totally normal rogue powers of seeing 200 feet in the yeah. dark or 300 feet in the dark. And, you, and, can and... See, you can see all of the undead. And bad touching people with yeah. inflict wounds, like um, all rogues can. Just, just don't do that to Roland. Uh, we'll see. Oh, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's cool. So, so, like, um... Thing I could play more constantly? Give me more monsters, wizards. Yes. I want more monsters. I haven't had that problem, but I also haven't ran a lot of games, so... It's just when you, like, need specific type of monster. You start yeah, to but... have issues with it. I just made a specific monster. I want you guys to fight a big crab. It's been horribly mutated by yeah, horribly like... cursed magic. I made it myself. <laughs> I've also just, like, I'm now just like, Hey, there. oh, there's a book, there's, like, a bunch of weird undead in 3.5. I'm just gonna convert these. That yeah, that'll be fine. so much easier. I'm sure we won't die horribly from yeah, the yeah. fact that they're converted. Well, yeah, yeah, definitely not going to murder you horribly with some kind of monster that'll eat your skin. Ooh, skin! 
So do we want to do a deeper discussion? Now? We want to have a deeper discussion now. I think it's a great time too now that we've eaten skin. Let's talk <laughs> eating skin. Secrets and RPGs cuz I think secrets come in a lot of different flavors is the thing. And when we talk about secrets, I think the the first thing you divide up is there are two secrets groups. Uh, there are secrets from other players. Um there, well, there's player-based secrets and there are GM-based secrets or DM-based secrets. Uh, player-based secrets, you have secrets of other players, and then you, maybe you have like you can kind of have secrets from your DM. Oftentimes, that really that one's what I can kind of take with the form of I don't know what I want to do yet. Let's keep it a secret until I can use it, and then we'll talk about it later. And I just have like a basic idea of it. Like you could be like, I have a dark secret. I don't know what I want to do with it, and you're like. And the DM might be like, fine, talk about it me later on or when you want it to come up. That can kind of happen. That's, that's like, not really existent. And then you have DM secrets from players, which, I mean, they have a lot of them. But, like, that can kind of, uh, like, with Lightning, what you were saying, there, there are forms of that, too. What do you, yeah. what, what, what's, what's, why don't we start with the player-based ones? Because those are kind of, like, the ones that most people are going to encounter. Cool. We have so many player-based secrets in this collection of people right now. Because yeah. uh, later today, we are going to be playing in my game, which I am running. And almost the entire party has, like, secrets in their backgrounds. But they're not in the way of, like, I gave them information as far as the setting goes and the game they're playing. And they're like, ah, no, 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 my secrets, I won't share them. They're more of, like, hey this character ha I mean, tragic backstory it's, I'm, I'm running a Grim Hollow game uh, <laughs> um, oh, oops all Grim Hollow yeah yeah uh, but like people have like reasons for why they're here and maybe they don't want to share them but in the end of the day they're still together and as a party and for the most part their background secrets aren't really affecting how the game plays um, and I have to be really careful because I know everyone's secrets, uh, and, and two of them are players here. Yes. Um, but if, if, and I'm also playing in Momo's game, right? I, I have a character that has a lot of secret stuff. Yeah. And, um, one of the players, cause I, I'm making like jokes about it, like out of character, like, oh, you know, blah, blah, totally normal rogue stuff. Um, and they were like trying to guess what my uh, race was and what my class was because I multi-class and I'm just, and uh, Momo you have an opinion about that yeah I feel that constantly asking it kind of starts to ruin it a bit um, because I mean I'm also doing work on my end to keep it hidden until you reveal it we're having a lot of secret back and forths in handouts um, and then also like it, I, I can't imagine how goddamn annoying it is for you <laughs> for this person to constantly be like I think you're this I know you're this and it's also out of character none of yeah. it has come up in character no, like, like... Uh, the, the character is a, is a dark skinned elf uh, that wears a cowboy hat and has horns and they have a duster right yeah. they have also an old man who has a duster on so it's like that's not totally weird um but like, and this is part of a problem when you have a very large group of players, right? When the more players you have, the more I guess railroady the game gets because the DM kind of has to keep you all on track. Where if you have less players, you can have a lot more role play and back and forth and stuff, um, which is like four or five, I think, is a decent number for still having time for for um, interaction role play player yeah. it, ro players role playing with other players, bleh, and not just having the DM expunge uh, information. So all of the guessing and stuff has all been out of character. There's been very little like in-character chatting besides like, what do we do here? And a lot of it is like, hey, let's explore this area. Um, so I think a lot of that is more on um, I, I guess the, the player side of it is the players just like not really caring who's in the party, which is a little sad. Yeah, that, that's not happening. I like your character quite honestly the most. <laughs> um, and I, I want to, I want people to ask about your backstory and stuff. But also, you guys met like a week ago. <laughs> and yeah. That, so. Yeah. The, the game has been progressing a lot slower in um, time in the game 
Because it's like, what, session four or five now? This is session four we just had. Yeah, it was, I think it was a little bit shorter than normal. But, we we yeah. cut it because I think um, Luke wasn't feeling well that day. So he yeah, that's fine. To stop early, which is fine. We had a cutoff point, which was fine anyways. Um, There's also back. other people who have secrets in that, which yeah, I can't yeah. talk about. I mean, I can because I know some of them just by obviousness. Um, I mean, but when, like you as a DM. Yeah, I can't bring up those secrets because yeah. um, it would ruin things. Um, basically, like I will say this: um, there are quite a few of you who have well, who, of people who have given me backstory because <laughs> three people still have not given me a backstory, and that's fine. You don't have to give me a backstory. I have your background ideas. That's fine. You just might not get anything like fun. In interjected in the story like I'm not gonna have if you don't give me like a group you're part of they're obviously not gonna show up you're not part of a group yeah um but yeah I, there I'm juggling a lot of, of secrets there's been a lot of secret talks and I feel that's fine personally I think player secrets as long as they don't detract from the game are fine I kind of agree on yeah. that end like you know yeah um, it, the I problem think... the problem is when you have like let's say uh roll and discover something, right? That's Momo's mm -hmm. character in, in my game. If I'm like, hey, everybody, roll me something, and like everyone rolls really bad, except for Roland, they get like a 20 or a 25, where I'm like, oh, cool. And then because because of how I want to to do it, either I, I PM it, like a DM message, like a whisper, or I give a handout, or I, I say it out loud, but then Roland is like, cool, I'm not going to tell anybody about this. <clears throat> and Sometimes that's okay. If it's a really minor thing, it doesn't really matter. But if it's a major plot device, then part of that actually is uh, pour on the DM. Um, yeah. Because the DM needs, to, if it's a major plot device, it needs to be a lot easier to discover it, which is like the rules of threes, right? You don't hide everything behind one check. Really, you shouldn't hide anything behind a check. Check should be for like more information. Yeah, like um, I'll, I'll use my game as an example. I had you guys roll, quote unquote, to look at a, a book shelf. To see what was on it, the the required books you would need were a DC zero. It would just be, hey, you find something funny on that shelf, or um, if so if someone had rolled like a twenty, you would have found out that Kellick was putting books onto that shelf <laughs> to be a dick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I I don't like like if people fail a roll and I succeed it, and I get like information that's important to the plot or general things going on. I don't like to hide that because I feel like that's a dick move. People should know about it but I've d also done it if it's like I'll use one of my 5 characters she was a monk. She had a very specific item with her that was a secret. She found another one. She kept that a secret for a while. Yeah. I think that's fine. But if it's like plot importance no, nah, that shit's getting told to the party. Yeah. Um, in uh, it's been a long time since we played, but I was in a game of Call of Cthulhu. It was the um, Delta Green rules, which makes it a little bit less deadly for players. Plus, there were some other things going on, and it was in like a modern setting. And I don't really remember what it was because it's been a long time. But my character was a, a cop, an ex cop basically. It was a, on the track to being detective, but horrible. Uh, werewolf things and being obsessed with the case basically got me kicked off the force and I had a lot of mental problems because I watched a whole bunch of people die around me and be eaten by werewolves. Um, so yeah, Mike had some problems <laughs> and he was kind of like <laughs> slowly trying to work through that. And part of me um, kind of screwed up making the character. Right? I had him very closed off because to me that made sense that this guy is not just going to talk to a bunch of random strangers that, oh yeah, while I was working a case, a pack of werewolves descended on us and ate all my friends around me. Why the hell would he tell random strangers about this? Like, I this guy was going to therapy just over casual this. casual dinner conversation. Yeah, about. so, like, I understand, you know, having players know why a character is like that in character as opposed to out of character. Like, most people knew out of character why Mike was messed up, right? But none of them really knew in character. And I was like, I, I should have been more open with the character and talking about things. And I realized that a little bit later when I was kind of like in this 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 corner, like, crap, I, I've messed up, right? I should have been a little bit more open with things. And so I was going to start talking more about that. And the game kind of ended for various reasons. And I kind of felt bad. And it's kind of like, ah, I, you know, I wish I was more open. Um, but there was also a 
a plot thing that came up that I found because I was like super detective. I was like Batman for some of these these roles. It was stupid. And it was like the DM was like, hey, you found this thing. I'm like, cool. I'm, uh, I'll hang on to it for now because I felt like it was like not the time to bring this up. Like, I don't know. I mean, it might have been like on a boat sinking or something. And so I'm like, I'll talk about it later after this boat thing, right? And I'm pretty sure the DM was a little upset that I did that. But it's like I fully intended on bringing it up later. Is just like in the moment, uh, you know. Like l let's say, uh, put a D and D spin on this. Let's say you're uh, in an old tomb or something, and like the rogue finds this weird gem or whatever, and he's like, "Cool, I pocket it." And you're like, "All right, the, the gem does this stuff." And if that gem is important to the plot, you would probably have like a locked door that you have to put the gem into to progress, right? So it's like, "Hey, you find a door with a weird gem shaped thing on it." And the rogue is like, oh, hey, yeah, I found this gem thing. So there's kind of ways you can force secrets out as a DM. Yeah. It just depends. I, um, <clears throat> I guess an example I can use is without revealing anything. Uh, I think uh, we've mentioned this before. My character in Lightning Museum has an elf skull that does horrible curse shit, <laughs> yes. quite honestly. Uh, and it started, uh, some weird shit started happening with Roland with uh, visions and stuff. If Roland had kept, like, all that just a secret, we would have messed out on, like, a lot of fun stuff, a lot of fun roleplay and development. And I feel like that would have sucked, personally. But there is also a case for keeping that a secret if, if Roland was maybe afraid of, of what the party would think and things yeah. like that. So. You know, it's one of those things that, like, player-based secrets that you kind of create on your own player are very easy to be like, oh, I can keep that a secret until it's important or until, like, role-playing comes up. But you kind of, like, as you make them, you want to have them come out at some point in time, I feel like. Secrets yeah. that are kind of laid out by the DM, those can be vary, And that I think that kind of creates those issues that are like that, that, like... The DM might be like, hey, this is something that you know that the others don't know. Do you want to reveal it? Granted, there are issues sometimes that occur with, like... Like, I can give an example. In Thursday, sometimes I've had it that Maxwell knows something. He's not great at telling anybody else it. <laughs> Let's give a good example here. Horrible monster was supposedly threatening Carrie's home village. They arrive at Carrie's home village. So about that monster! And everybody is like, what? <laughs> is there a bounty for it? <laughs> I rewatched that, I'm like, wow! That's actually kind of funny. <laughs> it's like, I think his entire excuse was, we were going here anyway. <laughs> I like money. <laughs> also, like, there might be a bounty on it. We're like, and, and Carrie's like, it is my home village. We would have gone quicker. <laughs> we, oh, we wouldn't have gone to, like, a party, you know, where there was, like, you know, stuff going on. Instead of going to the place where my family hangs out. Uh, you should have made them all dead. They yeah. should have just showed up, and the monster should have been just destroying the entire town. And then looked at them, and then, like, looked at Maxwell, and, like, gave him a wink, and then, like, <laughs> ate a bunch of people and just started walking away. <laughs> that would have just been so mean. I could have done that. I really could have I at mean, that point in time. So, in in that thing, uh, that that's slightly on my... I just want to touch on this real quick. Because um, we're not over time for once. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, my brain just shut off for a second. Um, yeah, uh, player punishment uh, for not doing things quickly. Um, I think it's probably bad, um, but I can understand why doing it. So that would be funny, but I don't know if I'd ever do that. I mean, you can also do it in, in like you can punish players by not directly affecting them as well. Yeah, but I mean, um, like, that, that's the hometown being eaten, yeah. that kind of affects them directly. Yeah, I mean, you could have, like, um, the way I would handle something like that 
if it wasn't done in like a, a obviously it's kind of like a, a kind of a more comedic kind of thing. I don't really watch Thursday. I don't have the time, unfortunately, but mm-hmm. I've heard yeah. things, and it seems like it is pretty funny a lot of the times. Uh, to me, at least. Um, the way I would have maybe done it is <laughs> they got there late. Maybe a few more people uh, or a few people have gone missing or, or a few more of other people have already gone missing. And they could have prevented that if they had shown up earlier. That's not fully directly like punishing them completely, it, but it's still some form of, of punishment. Yeah, because then the player knows that, oops, uh, I should have said this uh, earlier, people died because of my inaction. I've done this to you guys. On Friday with the centipede, when you just yeah, left I, all of them alive. I was totally willing to go over there and freaking murder all of them, and but I'm just like, I'll just do what the group does, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for context, um, they left some centipedes in the crypt alive because they used to sleep, and they grabbed a bunch of loot and left. Um, those centipedes got out, killed two people, and dragged them into the crypt. Yeah. And they had to go back and deal with it. Yeah, we actually had to fight, like, what, five or seven there of them or something? eight of them. Oh, was there eight of them? Yeah, I killed like five. You killed four. most of them. I know. I was I was the murder machine that day. It was great. And then you proceeded to roll like nothing but was ten last session. <sighs> oh, those stupid skulls. We'll talk about that in a little yeah. bit. Um, but uh, yeah. any 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 last thoughts on secrets? I think that secrets are something you're going to encounter in all of your games, no matter what. Whether it's you know. Your players keeping a secret from the other players that they created as part of the backstory, or like you know, just you know, something they're doing in the game secretly, you know, Oof, or that might be bad level secrets right there. Yeah, but well, well the, it the, could be done well. If I'm if I want to do something secretively and I message you directly, that I think that becomes how does the GM react at that point in time and control that secret? Like you know, if Certainly, like, that, you know, that that might be like, you know, if my character's a dick and I want to steal from the party, then yes, you're going to probably yeah. do stuff to have that be, like, revealed, because yeah. that's just awful, you know? Yeah, it's like, oh, you go to find your healing potion. It's gone. You mm-hmm. don't have that. Mm-hmm. And it'd be like, what happened? And, like, you see the rogue. He has a healing potion on his belt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it's that kind of thing can happen, but like that's really just anti-party dynamics, which can happen. But oh, that's yeah. a whole other. But topic. that same yeah. rogue could also do something that could have a similar result. Like that same rogue could be like, you're talking to a guard, and he's like, I'm gonna pick his pocket secretly. <laughs> or this happened in Momo's game, stealing random documents from the church. Yeah. And not telling um, anybody. That's a yeah. secret. No yeah, one knows a, about that's this. That's a secret. All the players know about it. Yeah, the, the characters do. Yeah, just, and, just and there are then like those documents. player player versus character secrets sometimes too. Like all the players could know a secret, and now the players could like you know that can happen too, definitely. Like, there's there's technically two of those in my game, uh, the 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 document stealing and then the dream eating event. Oh yeah, we know about that. Yeah, the, uh, the totally but, normal elf. Stuck yeah, the, into the old man's room and had sucked dreams. his dreams. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just like num 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 dreams. With a weird it's like, tentacle. Well, that's weird, but none of the characters know anything about it. Just the players. It's be real, real good when uh, that has to happen every seven days. That's yeah, probably fine. If Lindsay doesn't do it. There's gonna be some penalties. Cool, I love it. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, oh yeah. Anyway, my addendum to what Tantas was saying. Uh, secret things that are that are active, uh, or no, 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 no. Um, uh, secret things done to the party by m- members of the party, I think, are pretty much strictly all bad. Yeah. Uh, and and even if it's just like harmless fun, like hoo hoo, DM, I put glue on his ch- his chair. That's just kind of a dick thing to do. I mean, people might have a laugh at it, but the player you do that to. They probably are going to be a little upset about it. So it really depends. The way I handle those kind of things is if it's not like super dickish or mean spirit, I'll be like, okay, role play it so they know. That's how I tend to handle those. I think that way you can that way you can deal with it in role play rather than, hey, 
you sat down on a chair and now you're just stuck to it. Someone put sovereign glue on your chair. <laughs> no. <laughs> now we're pretty bad. Stuck to the yeah. chair forever. Yeah. Oh, we, only a wish spell gets rid of it. Or or the other anti glue <laughs> thing. <laughs> Oh, well, now you gotta really go on a quest to find this uh, anti glue. Mm -hmm. Just gotta break this chair off and just have a couple boards stuck to my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would do that. I'd be like, all yeah. right, barbarian, get over here, or smash this table to pieces. Look, then you get a new title. Protection. Then you're Eric the Board Ass. Yeah, you got the <laughs> ass protection. <laughs> Hey, that better give me a plus one to AC if I'm. That's all I'm saying. Plus one to um, plus one AC against people who are flanking you. <laughs> and people I'll, are I'll just I'll just always turn around and be like, I'll, I'll put my butt to the group. With only my only action. Panther's just gonna get this, but you do what Clash does. You just uh, put your shield on your back. <laughs> yeah. Mhm. Mm I mean, look, I was gonna go for my mm -hmm. age-old line that I used when I had the cloak of manta ray. No one's gonna attack my ass when I'm manta ray. No one's gonna attack your ass when you got boards on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the most protected ass in the kingdom. I I think I said that because I'm like, ooh, it's got a tail attack. That's its butt. <laughs> no one's gonna attack my ass when I got a butt attack. Oh boy. Uh, uh, shall we talk about D and D games? <sighs> yeah, we Probably. should talk about D and D games. I think that's good. Um, what? Let's start with my game. Sure. That's technically the latest one. Uh huh. Something. It's the one that yeah. we had last Saturday evening. Yeah. Uh, it was chaos. Yeah. It was mental breakdown. The session. I mean, I guess I can go through, and you guys can chime in if I forget anything. Sure. All right, so you guys were running away from Cobalts. And instead of running away from them, uh, two of the party members went almost directly towards them. And then they were surprised when they closed the distance very fast. So that was a very rough start to the session. And so they're like, wait, wait, wait. We meant to go this direction, not this direction. It's like, fine, whatever. They're still close because you've just gone like, I don't know, 100 feet to the north at this point. And, and so that, that was pretty rough. I, I felt like certain people in the group weren't happy about that, but that's just how world works in physics. Them, them's the break. Yeah. yeah. So once that was kind of sorted out, guys got away because you didn't have any lights on you. They weren't going to follow you. And then you got to the next town, which is where you were. You were on a mission to escort a caravan, trade caravan. And then you had a second side quest of setting up a, um, a lumber deal. Um, and for the most part, you guys really didn't want to do anything in the town, even though there's technically stuff you can do here. So it's like, oh, okay. And so you kind of just screwed around for like three days. <clears throat> um, but then some weird dream things happened to a certain member of the party, and uh, that made him really upset. Uh, and also, he has uh, fox ears now, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is weird. And then one of the other party members decided, I'm going to go see what's going on with this weird skull thing. And for fun, I'm like, give me a wisdom save. Um, nothing was going to happen, but they rolled a one. <laughs> so I have altered the deal. Pray I do not alter it further. <laughs> and now the skull affects the entire party. <laughs> so, hooray! Uh, I probably have some kind of interesting thing I'm going to do with this, but I won't say because, you know, I have two players in the call with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so because of the horrible thing that that player witnessed, they went and got really drunk. And then one of the other people were like, I don't like to drink. I'll drink. And roll the one for the con save on the first drink and immediately passed out. Uh, and then they got even more drunk and started throwing weapons around. And so the guard showed up and threw him out of the place. And they were probably going to take him to jail. And then uh, someone was like, don't worry, I'll take care of him. And then so uh, the, the party druid uh, took the barbarian, drunk barbarian, out of town and just, like, entertained him with the druid craft and stuff. While he was really drunk. Look, <sighs> yeah. I oh, gave I Roval one job, and he did it well. Yeah, <laughs> Roval did it. Ro Roval is now the party mom. <laughs> uh, <laughs> your problem. <laughs> I'm like, Roval, you take care of it. <laughs> 
uh, and Marty went to a different inn, paid a little bit more money because they were technically getting a discount for staying here because the the caravan knew the people there and they got a pretty big discount. And just was like, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. Um, and then Marty also just went off and like got into contact with some movers and shakers of the town and was like, hey guys, you know what would be really great? See, there's this trade road you have here, but there's all these kobolds that are attacking everything on the trade road. You could use that river because it goes straight down to the other town and then blah, 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 blah. Let's make this happen. Because <laughs> they're a bureaucrat. <laughs> they're Hermes from Futurama. Yeah. My background yeah. is bureaucrat. I'm a bureaucrat and, um... and also... Well, you know, there you bureaucrat go. I, rogue. Humor, but Hermes, yeah. yeah, rogue. Yeah, you're Hermes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and... Well, Marty was being super mega productive. Uh, Roland slept in a tree and woke up with socks ears. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look, things happened that session that, um... They happened. Nothing weird's gonna happen next session. Yeah, everything will be fine. Nothing... Nothing is always planned. I didn't make, like, five or six different NPCs you guys are going to run into possibly today. Uh -huh. Nothing like that happened. Yeah, of course not. Mm -hmm. Sounds, you know, sounds about right. Everything's fine. Yeah, every everything's totally fine. No one is cursed at all. Everything is totally normal, and it's all fine. Fox ears are just normal for elves. Yeah, it's just, you're just going through your second puberty where you, you turn into a kitsune. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty normal thing in my world. <laughs> I, I, I do want to say, just for visual, um, Roland has shaved sides for his haircut. And he has, he has no fox more ears now, so it probably looks really disturbing and weird. <laughs> yeah, he's just got smooth sides of his head and foxes yeah. on the top. Yep. Because, you know, there's no hair to cover that, so it's like, oh, that's not. That's, that's a look right there. Oh. Also, basically, everyone in the party, except for, I think, Roval, touched the ears. Does, did Roval see the ears? I'm pretty sure Roval saw them, but, like, didn't have any opinion. It's yeah, just like, like mm. fucking everyone's just petting the ears. <laughs> it's like, and it's like, that feels nice. They're very soft ears. And, but it's also weird, because it's like, <laughs> Roval became, not Roval, sorry. Roland became, like, the party pet. Like, oh, these ears are so nice. I, I feel so relaxed petting them. And it's like, that's my head you're petting. <laughs> I believe the exact words when Marty did it was, I know what you're like with the Kitsune women. Don't try it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Look, uh... it was just fluffy ears in general. I mean, I'm... <laughs> They're nice. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Tantos, you have a game on Sundays? I do. As I, as Did I you have a kitty ear? Piece? And she, she just twitches her ear. <laughs> She's like, stop that. Stop that. Sleep it. Stop that. No, please. Twitchy ears. Uh, yeah, I have my Sunday game uh, where we continue to try to establish our campsite. Uh, we went to get a water supply and were attacked by werewolves. Oh, cool. Werewolves. Fortunately, uh, two of our teammates were immune to disease, so didn't have to worry about it. One because they're a Warforged, the other because they're a Paladin. Oh, one's an android. That's what I'm sorry. Yeah, an, an android. <laughs> 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 I mean, I was using the appropriate terms for D&D &D 5e, but sure, android. I mean, they're basically an android. Yeah, it's basically an android. <laughs> So yeah, so we beat up some werewolves, and uh, like the first round, we I think one of our people entangled their dire wolf pet. So like the dire wolf, which was like probably the more deadly thing of the group, was like stuck for like the entire time while we murdered the rest of them. Is this um, second edition Pathfinder? Uh, no, this is D&D &D 5e we do on Sundays. Mm. And uh, I moonbeamed the lot of them, because I'm like, oh, look at this spell I just gained the last level. Moonbeam! <laughs> look at my laser. Werewolves? And they were werewolves. I didn't know about them up until then. I'm just like, you know what? Moonbeam. Moonbeam's a great you know spell. Space <laughs> laser team is appropriate for this situation. Yeah, yeah. I'm also like the celestial druid, the one that gets like the star powers. So like, oh, I'm like Roval. Cool. Yes. <laughs> Except not so crazy. No. You just get a weird skull mask. No, I'm an elf. 
I I have a I have an ele I have a star map on like a weird crystal. That's what I have. I have a star map for my thing. Oh, so you're mobile without a skull mask. <laughs> yeah, without a skull mask and without a crystal. I replaced no, no, it. Roll has a crystal. No, no, I don't have a crystal though. I've got a, an actual like map of stars. Oh, oh, oh a map, map. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Like like a physical map. Helps you never forget. Mm -hmm. It does. <laughs> and I did it. I used moon power to like melt werewolves. Like, it's describe your kill with the moonbeam, and I'm like, it disintegrates horribly under the moonlight. <laughs> oh, jeez. Being nothing Can but a skeleton oh, remaining. <clears throat> That's quite a different song to dancing to in the moonlight. Jesus. <laughs> well, it's like a giant tower of moon energy that, like, I just imagine it burning everything with, like, radiant energy. It's probably going to kill all the plants. Uh, I mean, it's just, it, plants don't die from moonlight. It's that sunlight. <laughs> from, like, yeah. deadly radiant energy that burns things alive? They were undead plants, so they took, uh... <laughs> they were plants, oh, those are, they are very dead now. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was the big thing we did there, was, like, I moonbeamed a bunch of werewolves and called it a day. <laughs> very, very good. Um, Monday, we did have, uh, Records of Evil. Which, uh, you broke into a police station and, uh, murdered a guy. Yep. We, we, ep we Epstein something. <laughs> you did Epstein someone. Mm-hmm. Uh, Can you also turn into a rat or something? Um, One of them transported the rat, and they got the security guard banished to another plane briefly. They banished the security guard to, um, some harmless demi-plane. I just... Who tried to, because the first one he made his save, he rolled like a 19 or 18 or whatever, and he's just like... Huh, that was weird. <laughs> it's like he like looks at his sandwich. He's like, man, this meat probably went bad. And then you hear distant popping sound. <laughs> oh, I just imagined him like plummeting the entire time or something. Like he plummets and just kind of looks, and there's a whale falling from the sky as well, just next to him. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is this? Oh god! Oh, uh, <laughs> He pops it and he's like, it's like, man, this is a really bad sandwich. <laughs> Oh. Uh, he was there for like what a minute? He was like yeah. there for a minute. Yeah, that, that's a long time to be falling. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's a long time to be tripping balls. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, good old security guard. But then they killed that man, very dead, and managed to get out. And mostly got away without any issues. Though an oh, this raccoon was seen in there. A raccoon. <laughs> It's just, it's just raccoon. Ooh, it's like, where the hell did the raccoon come from? <laughs> the raccoon did it. <laughs> That's this is probably going to be like security footage or something. Like, of, like, the raccoon all over, did it. Uh, Feyrude, uh, fucking the Feyrunian internet. There's going to be this conspiracy theory of this raccoon killing this man. Mm -hmm. Next D&D character I'm going to play, instead of being a kitsune, they're going to be a kitkune. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. Uh, into a raccoon, and I'm just gonna commit crime as a raccoon. <laughs> raccoon crimes. <laughs> yeah, I mean they have a built-in mask; they're ready for it. Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, like you're in, you're in a, you're in a semi-magical universe. Like people will be like, "Yeah, totally, that raccoon did it. <laughs> it was a magic yeah, assassin I mean, raccoon." Yeah. Hear Thanks me box. out. You have opposable. You have like normal hands, so you can just hold like a knife. It also yeah, yeah. Exactly. Bug, bug <laughs> someone. It also stole a sandwich. And gave the it raccoon did yeah. steal a sandwich. <laughs> Which may or may not, which didn't actually have bad ham, but made the guy think he had bad ham. And when he came back from his weird thing, the sandwich was gone. Yeah, he's like, did, oh. I, did I eat the entire thing? Oh, man. No wonder I had such a weird trip. Oh, oh man. Yeah, and then, um... Good time. Then I had Pathfinder 2nd Edition, which was mostly okay, except I think my big complaint was that, uh, you know, the one person missed it. Everyone else I guessing ignored me trying to set up a role playing moment for characters. Mm. You know, yeah, it was it was it was a that. softball throw of a role playing moment. They used that time to go have a pepper eating contest in which, you know, they I guess a couple of them won, good for them, but like, you know, appropriate usage of time apparently. I, I only can peppers. assume this stupid stuff that we were doing in town gives us a reward at the end. <laughs> I hope 
It's sort of like, you know, like befriending the people of Ravengrow, except it's making friends with these elves by having pepper eating contents. Like eating all their peppers. <laughs> oh, bro, you ate like 16 of my peppers. That's awesome. I want to be your friend. <laughs> yeah, or like performing and or uh, making two of them horny. <laughs> because that was, a, that was technically a thing we did. We, we set two of them up on a date. Yep. Mm-hmm. Nice. Look, the, I I don't know. This is like slightly better than I think Raven grows like set sy system of trust, but it's still sort of like I feel like our DM could have done this a lot better, and I feel like it was more on inexperience on that one. I for one think Raven Grow could have been improved with a pep reading contest. I really could have. <laughs> I think. I mean, I think probably I, actually. A, a preparatory contest is not a bad idea. Like the uh, the concept behind it, I don't mind. I just feel like it was sort of a little random. We just made some people horny, and like some random kids showed up and are like, "We challenge you to a pepper eating contest." Uh, <laughs> I I cast. Um, <laughs> what what's the thing that makes you terrified or whatever? Cause fear. Like no. I, no, I cast cause fear at third level on the kids. Yeah. <laughs> I, actually, that, that came up in a game. I don't remember what game it was or if I did it, um, but uh, there was someone who came up... Oh! Was that in Grinding Gears? That I, like, cast... Oh, I know what I did. I, I, I did, like, um... I don't know if it was a cantrip, but it was basically, like, a, a, a fear thing, right? And, like, the kids were like, ah, oh, play with us, play with us, ah, oh, we want to do things, and they're they're like, they're, you you can see they were around tricking people and like playing pranks. And so I'm like, I don't know, screams of the damned, or precipitation or whatever. And they're like, ah! And they ran away, like all terrified. And I'm like, I kind of felt bad, but the kids were really, really annoying. The kids deserved it. <laughs> It'll teach Probably. them a lesson. Anyway. Mm -hmm. the, the vampire? Did you talk about that? No, no we haven't moved on that. Vampire. We didn't have a vampire. They enjoyed some time in Kenya. Um, I got to introduce them to the not dick antediluvian. Oh yeah, where I'm... is she at in our Pathfinder game? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. Well, it's, it's she's the Tory oh. antediluvian, and like when you read about her, she's like she's there, but she's not like. She doesn't have design grand plans. She doesn't have, like, you know, I'm going to become an essence of madness or shadows or darkness or spiritual. She's just like, I do some art. Which is cool. Uh -huh. Also, nice. she was hot, apparently. Mm hmm. As how all tall, vampires. How tall was she, though? Uh, probably, like, probably, like, I assume maybe, like, six foot tall not for tall. the age she came from. Not tall enough for me, sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> must I be only... nine feet. Yeah, must be nine feet tall. Mm -hmm. And the ability to step and crush your head. Yeah, exactly. With, with just regular human powers, not even vampire powers. Mm -hmm. Which would, like, obliterate, atomize your head, I guess, if vampire lady stepped on you? I don't know. I don't know, I can find, I'm sure there's a video somewhere. Hop like oh, a... yeah, there's a coconut that can smash somewhere. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, so yeah, so things went well, they kind of discovered things and are like leading towards where they need to go and they'll probably show up there in the next session um and then uh didn't have star trek yeah because someone would didn't have enough sleep to run a game properly because which... of young children which is a very yeah. good excuse <laughs> yeah young children are obliterating their sleep schedule which makes it really hard to focus and do anything when you have no energy in your brain mm -hmm. yeah and then uh we had carrying, carrying crown. crown yes we're we, we, we sort of have a new player as well which yeah. later today I'm probably going to help them with like feats and items because yeah. this is probably the highest level they've played in Pathfinder because mm -hmm. all the other games they're like wait I get items I get <laughs> I get feats because their other DM doesn't like giving that kind of stuff oh, they're wow. very low level DM mm -hmm. they love low level stuff well yes you uh, finished off the werewolves and now you're heading to uh, a haunted well, venture you're, you're, skipping, you're, you're skipping, skipping the most over, important part uh -huh. skipping over something really important uh -huh. so we fought three really horrible dudes mm -hmm. um 
who had more resistances than other regular lesser werewolves. So that fight took quite a bit of time because yeah, yeah. he has log fed. Uh, our our mega slick, while on the ground prone, managed to critically hit one <laughs> and do a ton of damage because they're a megas and that class is totally broken. And I'll be honest, I'd probably just ban it from any game I was running in Pathfinder because I hate that class. Uh, also, it melts people's brains. Yeah, it's got too much stuff to it. It, it feels like I'm just gonna tangent here for a second. It feels like Paizo didn't know what they were doing when they made that class, because it seems so incredibly broken and overpowered compared to everything else. It's like, why wouldn't you just have an entire team of Magus? It's the unfortunate thing that I think, like, it feels that way, but, like, I've seen it played out pretty standard, and it really doesn't end up being much more powerful. Like, the, bi the, the big hits are bigger, is what I have to say. But you have to notice that, like, the consistency of Anne is pretty slim, yeah. and that I is wanna, his advantage. I want to just say, um, if we're going to compare characters, let's compare Zoram and Anne. Zoram hits most of the time. Anne hits not that often. <laughs> yeah. Consistency seems to be the thing. That is their, yeah. their, their but, but when Anne damage. Hits, she hits. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we fought these three werewolf dudes. Um, I have a bow. And mm -hmm. the regular bow doesn't do enough damage to break through their DR. But thankfully, it is a shocking bow, which has a pitiful D6 of extra electricity damage, which is all I probably did in that entire battle. I don't think I ever broke their DR, because they probably had like 10. And I think the most I did was 9. <laughs> they, they did have 10. <laughs> yeah, which is not. A kind I, I, tiefling gave you some silver arrows just for the next fight to be ended in a single round. Of course, the next yeah, the next fight, the person <laughs> rolled a one on a the will save for sleep. You know, just, it was like, oh, well, they're asleep. Uh, it's auto critical, thirty one damage. Yeah, he doesn't have a plus eleven to his four. He's dead. Yeah, <laughs> it was one of those like, well, frick, rolled a one. It, it, was, it was supposed to be this epic boss battle encounter. He just went to ah. <laughs> he just had a nap. Like, Bayer, Manacle rolling the nat 20 on the diplomacy check made it much less of an epic boss battle because you're That's really true. technically supposed... It's supposed to not be easy to convince her. And then it's like, I was going to get a nat 20. That's a 33. I'm, well, it was like, it was a 33. It was a nat 20. And it was, it was really high also. So I'm like... And you did technically have evidence, so I'm like, well, you kind of hit the DC to convince her. She's on your side now. <laughs> I, I yeah, for yeah. one am happy we did not have to, to fight the attractive werewolf. Yeah, yeah I would have felt really bad murdering her. Yeah. <laughs> she is hot, and my totally normal elf would have totally hooked up with evil werewolf lady. Uh huh. She's Just... neutral evil instead of chaotic evil. Yeah. Because she's a yeah. druid. <laughs> I can deal with that. No chaos is fine. Chaos. Yeah, yeah. She just does. She's just evil for evil's sake. Yeah. I mean, she can be evil with me. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You're playing a bard. I should be playing a bard. I'm playing a stupid <laughs> wizard, and I have crappy attacks. I mean, look, the wizard has some cool ideas. Uh, like eventually, the wizard will be less bad. But yeah. Right now they're kind of building into it. Yeah, a couple more <laughs> levels, and you're fine. Yeah. yeah, I just got haste. We leveled up <laughs> after that. So I'm like, I could get fly, but I'm a wizard. Just, Candace, give me a store to buy scrolls, and none of my problems will be... I will fly. tell you, on your very long trip, you could technically, technically take side areas to some larger towns along the way if you want to get surprises on, uh, supplies on the way to Feldegru. It is, it, you travel out of the Shutterwood, and it is a large amount of plains, which there are some cities on the edges of those plains. You would just have to sidetrack for a little bit to get to them. It's not well, that'll impossible. Bring Ro uh, not Roland. That'll bring Zoram back faster, because we'll spend more time traveling. <laughs> I mean, someone was like, I'll be like away for like a month, but you know, you're gonna, it's yeah. gonna be like a week to get to Feldegrim. Zoram... Anyway. And his haughty witch wife have departed momentarily from the party. He has the overpowered ability of slumber. Yeah, yeah, so good luck now. <laughs> I mean, I have been informed that it, it peters off eventually, yeah, but it does. it's um, really good. Which is very front-loaded yeah. for um, <laughs> carrying crown. Like, yeah. 
yeah. I'll, I'll be honest, like, there's uh, Morisai, Chastel, Ar Ardis, which are all kind of not quite along the way, but, you know, if I'm drawing a line from Asincor Lodge to the Furrows, where Feldegru is... I, I need to know how much money I They have, go I'm near to them. You would probably end up stopping at Chastel. Chastel's the Lodge easy there. one to get to, yeah. yeah. Um, the other ones are kind of, like, out of the, a little out of the way, you know, but not impossible. I'm opening up we, our game specifically we, to look at my character sheets. Can we fun. determine where this new character is going to show? Is it at the Lodge? Sure! I think I was saying that, like, uh, the the couple of new characters were back at the Lodge. They had been, you know, you sent for them a few days ago. They were fortunately not too far away, you know, so they could come in. Oh, um, I, I have 81 Platinum. I'm yeah. probably good for yeah, some scroll. You're, I'm, uh, you're you, probably fine. A couple, anyway. You scrolls can find, are expensive. Scroll, the scrolls get much more expensive as you yeah. go up. I think, like... Yeah, I mean, I can only get to third level spells right now, anyway. So, but a third level scroll is probably like three hundred to five hundred gold or something like that. Uh, well, I can tell you quickly here. I was. Uh, I, I know it's going to be expensive, but I mean, level three scroll be... is three seventy five. Oh, hey, not bad. Yeah, for for a wizard scroll, which would be the same as a sorcerer's. Well, that you're a wizard, so they are. I you I'm sorry. I well, hate what they did in five e. I hate it. I'm sorry. <sighs> They split them apart completely, and that was kind of weird. Like but the easiest thing to do is uh, if they wanted to have it special, and this is a very big tangent now, <laughs> yeah. is because sorcerers can't normally cast ritual spells. So anything that has a ritual tag, you just don't give it to sorcerers. And then there you go. Wizards have a unique thing that they can have ritual spells, and they also don't have to have them prepared. They can just they can just use them if it's as a ritual. They can just use them. Which is really cool for 5e. Like, playing a wizard is good. Yeah. If you want to dip into the ritual spells. Yeah, wizard is fun in 5e. Yeah. Oh, and here's the picture of the hottie hottie werewolf lady. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but regardless, uh, the, the Uslav thing is a side thing that, you know, could be could be done. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I really want more spells, because but... that's, the, that's the biggest thing I have going for me as this... This totally normal wizard character that's not my, at all. Right? My favorite I mean, thing about uh, what's going to be happening with Carrion Crown is someone who kind of specializes in divination is going to be joining a party with Anne, who on record has said divination is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Teach me your divination spells while you're in the party. Sure. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, let's go. <laughs> Anne's not going to get them. Anne doesn't believe in my magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. We'll just we'll just share our spells. I mean, oh, it's. <clears throat> the witch had the advantage of being able to like read your spell book, but you can't read the witch's bird. You're like, uh, tell me your bird. secrets, bird. <laughs> you just uh, just hold the bird like a book, just examining it. <laughs> tell me your secrets. It's like looking at wings. You're like, hmm, this this doesn't. Se <laughs> it's like, please uh, unhand me, good good madam. You take um, <laughs> you just pull out a knife while holding it. Tell me your spells. <laughs> I do have. Maybe a knife? I don't know. I have a long sword. I'll never use it, but I have one just in case. Nice. Uh, oh, I also man. have a crowbar for bonking people. But um. Yeah. Thursday. <clears throat> Thursday. Well, for Thursday for me, I had Children of Wrath, in which uh, things continued to be bad. Uh, they will. Bad for the players, bad for the players is probably true i mean look they created a wellspring of magical energy which the horrible witch could was living in and could therefore tap into to finally escape from her prison as she is now a technically a uh, a lich fairy cool that seems fine uh, nothing bad is gonna happen yeah i mean and so she escaped and gave them nice presents and, you know, uh, went off with a bunch of other, like, fae she enthralled from the local area uh, to go skin some people and get a skin back. Yeah, it's fine. She's going to make a people yeah. suit. <laughs> yeah, she just looked really evil and the party was like, hmm, she that's kinda, fine that she's here. kind of wants her skin back, you know, after the entire, you know, I mean, like, was if forced... I lost my skin, I would probably want it. In a horrible process that you yeah. were drawn between dimensions that caused it to melt off and you were forcefully turned into some form of horrible undead beast and then enslaved for about a couple decades. Yeah, uh, I'd probably want my skin back. Yeah, I mean, you know. 
went through some shit, gave them some nice gifts that are probably not at all technically possibly cursed in a way. No, nothing's ever cursed. If the mm -hmm. DM gives you something, don't question it. Yeah, just put your hand in the bag of holding. Don't yeah. worry about the blood. Like the uh, harp that can manipulate <laughs> people, uh, but also you have to make a perform check every time you make it, and if you fail the check, mm, <laughs> I'm just That's saying. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry yeah, about nothing, it. Nothing and it might be it happen. might be a pretty high DC check anyway to begin with. Just saying. Mm. Mm. So failure is an option, even for a very high level here, bard. Failure is always an option. Cough, cough, cough. Oh, I didn't have my third stake then. Uh, bar. Uh, that's a, I was, I was gonna say darn and bummer, but it just came out as barn. Uh, and at the Blarn. end, I I totally had the weather like showing up because they've been like on the horizon of showing up for like ever now. So now they're showing up. Yeah. Nice. There's just so much cursed stuff happening in your Thursday game. They caused a lot of it on their own. Yeah, it's almost like, now well, I'm not gonna sass players. <laughs> yeah. uh, but... And it's kind of like they did it to themselves because they're bad. <laughs> well, it wasn't all on a certain demonic entity's fault this time. There was, you know, the goblin wanting to learn secret knowledges and therefore gave the witch a lot of his blood. Yeah. Well, and, uh, well, well, if it isn't the consequences of my own actions. <laughs> and then there's the skeleton who's really bad with his wife. <laughs> it just it just seems like all the characters in that game ha have no idea what they're doing. And they're just kind of stumbling their way through. It's like, well, you guys managed to succeed somehow, so we're just going to move on to the next thing. <laughs> they're falling upwards. <laughs> they really yeah. kind of are, because... I mean, they do make the checks to succeed and do the things to succeed. It's just they do it in such a really not great way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, oh boy. I I, I I can't do much on that one. On that one, I can you know, I can be like, well, you you did your you did your job, great. Te okay. Technically, you completed <laughs> things. Task task of failed successfully. <sighs> yeah. Well, you know, it's like. Uh, they learned some things that are helpful, I guess, maybe, possibly. They could use them. Ah, whatever. They'll, they'll be fine. That's future parties' problem. <laughs> that's that's their, <laughs> that's their part, problem in the future when they, like, you know, run into other issues that they've caused them themselves. Just... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. I mean, you guys don't have anything that you've done in my game that'll cause problems later. Not at no, all. No, definitely not. <laughs> no. Hey, Momo, ah, talk, yeah. about, had, talk about the Friday game. We had a Friday game. It was yeah. it was chaos. Y'all mm -hmm. couldn't hit three fucking skulls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we had an hour long fight. Or actually, I think it was like an hour thirty minute fight with some floating skulls. Was it no really one, that long? Where no one could roll over a ten. Yeah, I, and I the skulls were just like, all right, we're just gonna <laughs> munch on the barbarian more. Oh, barbarian got chomped on so much because like i think i have a plus six yeah to hit. You guys just kept and, rolling and so badly i think the highest thing i rolled in that combat encounter was a four yeah you guys just rolled wait i think so i did bad. have a 14 at one point yeah but no. i didn't use my bardic inspiration no. at that time because I, I was like had it at that time i might have lost it because i think i used it on an eight and yeah. then i was like i need a six i got a two yeah <laughs> Yeah. Awful. So they they Terrible. failed successfully to kill some skulls. They died eventually, um, and then they were like, "Hey, there's this weird hole here. There's a whole other place. Let's try to go down the hole." And the ghost's like, "Please don't. <laughs> Please don't go down there. I need you. I need you to clear the upstairs. Yeah, because to... plot reasons. Just plot. <laughs> um, and, and I mean, like, I kind of forgot." And I'm like, oh, I mean, it's, it'll probably be okay, maybe. And then I'm like, when we came back, so we went and rested, right? We yeah, took a yeah rest. you went and rested. When, and we came um, back, and I'm like, I'm going to open this door. And people were like, ah, I pulled out my rope, and I tie this thing up. So I'm like, all right. Um, yeah, I had to have Vasoriana, like, psychically contact someone to be like, no, dangerous. Don't do it, dumbass. <laughs> hey, idiots, stop. 
<laughs> um, but yeah, then <clears throat> you guys finally started exploring the rest of the place uh, and found the convenient uh, place where we, if you rest, nothing bad happens to you. Mm, we also um, found a lot of nothing except found a bunch for of that one nothing. room. Um, you found a room, like the chapel, which is supposed to have like the wolf spiders. I was like, wolf spiders are fine. I can put something more horrible in there. And I did. I put something called a skull spider in there, which will try to latch on your face and take over your body. Oh, um, yeah! It, like it this. landed on Lindsay, Lindsay's character, but it. A totally normal elf. Totally normal elf. But they killed it before it could do anything bad. And, I finally and, got to hit something with sneak attack. You did get to kill something with sneak attack. And the best part is, I, I described, um, oh. like, Lindsay fake gagged. But then I described what the spider was trying to do, and then it was real gagging. Yeah, because it's like it's hilarious. Trying, it's like this trying to, the skull spider was trying to pry open your jaw and crawl inside of your mouth. Yep. And it's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, they're really bad. Mm -hmm. Um, and they live inside of skulls. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, but then they met the uh, ghost lady and. We had some memeing of the old man really, really wanted to see that ghost lady. Yeah, who, who is the sexy blue lady in this room? Move out, move out, get out the doorway. I want to see. But they've been given their task to go explore the rest of the prison. Slash, well, it's not really. I've reflavored it to be like a fortress, not a prison. It, it's anymore. like a temple it's, or something. It's like it's a temple that was converted into like a fortress, like a military installation. Yeah. Um, when the. When the old pantheon went, went silent and all that bullshit and monsters started coming back to the world. I hope there's a masterwork bow in there that isn't rotted away. No there reason. is loot. I do have, like, good loot in there somewhere. I uh, just have to find it. Um, I want a new bow, <clears throat> damn it. <laughs> but we well, continued the bow. plot, mostly. Met some horrible monsters and are probably learning that undead mean more than zombies and skeletons. <laughs> No. Yeah. And there's probably ghosts upstairs. Yeah, there's probably ghosts and maybe some other horrible monster. And uh, I'm basically, as soon as we clear the, the bottom floor, because there's like two other places we need to look. And yeah. I really don't expect to see anything. I, I, I'm expecting, like, this is a toilet. And then we'll be done exploring the basement. I yeah. don't know if that's actually the case because I don't remember that map very well. And I'm also trying not to metagame. Yeah. Um, but basically, as soon as we finish exploring, uh, my totally normal character, Charles Wazhazu, uh, is just gonna go back to that place that felt safe. I mean, like, I'm taking a rest. If you want to continue, you're on your own. And just, I'm just, just straight up, that's what I'm gonna say to the party. Yeah. And then I'm gonna go and I'm like, I'm gonna the, take a rest. The, the ghost also informed you those people are probably dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're probably dead. Um, yeah. In Carrion Crown, but the, I've changed a lot of things. In Carrion Crown, you're supposed to go to Harrowstone and, and, and investigate and deal with ghosts. That's just kind of doing that here, but undead are specifically kidnapping people and dragging them to this place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is not normal, which is not what undead are supposed to do. Yeah, they're doing some, some stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, things and... are happening. It's memes. The party continues not to be able to hit anything. I mean, that's normal for characters. Yeah, just wait until I have uh, normal rogue fireball. Power? I mean, yeah, rogue rogue fireball. Rogue fireball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just the thing that rogues can do when they reach a certain level is they just can they just can cast a version of fireball. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Just yeah, that's my it. game. I'm having fun with it. Yeah, I, I really enjoy your game. Uh, it was a little chaos, uh, but I think that's partly just due to the map being kind of dumb. The map is... I'm just... I tend to... Uh, Harrison's map is dumb, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> it's a bad uh, There are some... It's definitely not... The crazy. map like, is no not the best done. To it. So. It's got problems, but then, like, I mean, all all official maps have problems. I'm going to just say that. Yeah, you can never quite have a perfect map. It, it, they yeah. they do a decent job sometimes, other than all so much. I will so. just say, I, I've never found an official house map that has, like, bathrooms in it. Mm-hmm. At least, Harrowstone <laughs> at least had bathrooms. Yeah, Har that's one thing we can say. Harrowstone had bathrooms. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I found a bathroom while the party was investigating the BS, and I'm like, I investigate the bathroom, and it's like, you don't find mm. anything right now the, the module, the oh. specifically the module is 
There is nothing of interest here today. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. That made me look. Leave. That's why I had cockroach swarm in the base in the in the toilet. Yeah, and we're just like, nope, we're no, not that's... touching that. Nope. I don't know uh, why you said no to that. That would have been wonderful. Don't you want no, the No, swarms are awful. It, what what was it like? It was like mansion. Like I had I was I think the way I described it was like, you know, like the like the person because they were like nauseous is like it's crawling everywhere inside you. So it's like you get them all in your mouth oh, and your like God. ears and you're mm. like you're like ah. Oh, well, that would have Oh, man, that's that would make Lindsay gag even more. No, it's bad. That's what I used in the uh, old days when people actually like, you know, Fell for the cockroaches. The old cockroach in the toilet trap. I know! You guys didn't do it. I'm so sad. I wanted a cockroach in the toilet again. No! I mean, like, part, our, my ah! party party is never going to find any traps because this old man keeps investigating for them. He's got a passive 17 investigation. I have a 15 passive, but it never mm. comes up because there's a 17 passive. Yeah, the old man always sees it first. But don't worry, because at level 5, I'm getting a free feat, and I'm going to expertise my freaking investigation yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, show up. Look, I'm going to say, if we, we're continuing carrying crowd, there is one more swarm I can remember off the top of my head, cool. which is in such a dick location. I might still use it, even though it's Hell really yeah. a dick location. I can't learn fire spells, but if there's any AoE spells that are not <laughs> fire-based... I can learn them and I can slot them. Mm -hmm. uh, let, let me but put specifically, it specifically. Let me put it this I... way for the 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 the, tick, the swarm that you will encounter. Yeah. Hi, Damien. <laughs> so fast. It's so no. It's in an, it ends up being in an area you do not expect at all, and you encounter it when you possibly take a sit down. Oh no, that's awful. Oh god, I was speak like was sitting down. I'm I'm like this close to just I mean, when that bard takes a seat, just be like there's a mimic on you now. <laughs> Chair mimic. Uh, immediately. Oh, hey, mimic does... can be anything. Can it can it swallow them? I don't, I don't know. If, I don't think a chair mimic could swallow them. Uh, it could probably grapple them though. Probably. Yeah, it, 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 like you sit in the chair. You know, uh, give me a dex save or something, what? right? Yeah, uh, and then it's kind of like, oh, the chair is really wobbly. That's weird. And then like, oh, you just took, you know, uh, 2d6 damage as the chair bites you. <laughs> you're grappled. Mm, <laughs> delicious, chair. delicious. You your normal biting chair. chair. Look, the, uh, one of these days I do have to do oops all mimics. <laughs> I mean, I do intend on using door mimics. I mean, I didn't just make a mansion house thing. That, uh, uh, I don't know what you're gonna plan on doing with it. Hey, no. if, if you would have ever, if you ever get to the fifth adventure in Carrying Crown, there are totally rogue mimics. Hell yeah! They oh give, god! They give mimics rogue levels, and I'm like, that's the meanest <laughs> that's, thing you can do. That's so rude. That's so oh, rude. They're gonna sneak rude. attack you. What the hell? Oof. God. All Look, right. someone... So that's our show. That's yeah, our show. Yeah. You have questions. I think there are probably no questions in chat. There, for <laughs> all the episodes where Joe and I were looking for questions for chat, there never were questions in chat. So I have incredible doubt that there well, will be questions. If in chat. If this goes on YouTube, you can you can write the questions there. If you made it to the end, give yourself a <laughs> thumbs up. Congratulations, you just watched it. There, there's a question podcast. in chat for you. <gasps> yep. Anyway. <laughs> you're in here where can I find some more D&D <laughs> content you can find it of course here we talked about the shows that you can look and watch 2pm uh, two, 2 uh, EST Mondays, Tuesdays 8pm uh, EST for Thursdays Thursday. uh, possibly other stuff on the schedule on the horizon I just haven't been working on it much uh, I gotta get to it I've been trying to catch up on the YouTube stuff which actually this week at the end of this next upcoming week I will Maybe. totally be caught up finally Hell after yeah. like hundreds and hundreds of episodes finally going up on youtube that i was behind well a hundred <laughs> episodes that i apparently had gotten behind on from like content i'd been but they're there now you should watch them there are some really yes. great ones from all the shows like the ramp <laughs> the... yeah the ramp such a good episode ramp was so great 
it was like, it's like the highlight of that entire adventure it I think, really so is the highlight of it the like just we're gonna ramp a car <laughs> i also blew up a gate and then ramped over the other one i think right. is what it was yeah it was just <laughs> oh it was great it was Her, it was insanity was it was insanity it was good insanity anyway we're gonna get going uh, hope you have a great day. Uh, thank you once again for joining me, uh, Lightning Momo. Always fun to yeah. have you uh, hanging around with us. Uh, thanks to everyone who joined us. Hope you have a great rest of your Saturday. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, hopefully you can join us next week or join any of us for the other stuff we do. And, you know, we'll see you next time. So until then, farewell. Yeah, yeah. I mean, bye-bye. <laughs>